Sunday NFL Countdown. Presented by Old Spice Red Zone. Spice things up. One of the great touches here at the Pro Bowl this year, they've added legendary coaches to each uh, side. Don Shula's going to help the NFC. Marv Levy's going to help the AFC. Here's Marv addressing the AFC players before the game. It's been a great honor for me this week to just mingle. I haven't had a chance maybe even to introduce myself to every one of you guys. I'm not here to give a motivational speech. Somebody once asked me how you motivate your football team. And that's easy. You select guys who are intrinsically motivated. And that's you. You don't have to be pep talked along the way. I know you're going to try to play at a level that your opponent is either unwilling or unable to match. So play hard, play clean, play to win. God bless you all. Just here. Marv said the last time he coached the Pro Bowl was against Newt Rockney. So uh, he, 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 he's Don enjoying that. Don Shula's going to be on NFC? the NFC. Baltimore. Oh. Hey, Baltimore. And anyway, a couple of notes. Tony Dungy, don't expect. Peyton Manning's going to be as in his ear all day. I want to play more. 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 We might see him in the fourth quarter in addition to the second quarter. And just a guess. I think the NFC's going up top very early, okay? <laughs> it's just the top. Teams next year, who are going to be surprise teams, the teams to beat next year? Well, you know, I was a week, uh, a year early this year picking the Denver Broncos. Next year, they signed Terrell Owens. Jake Plummer, second year in this offense. Mike Terrell Shannon, they get healthy. Denver Broncos, Tom, go the distance next year. I just think the Dallas Cowboys with Bill Parcells did such a great job this year. Now he put some players in place. I think you'll see the results next year. I, I like Joe Gibbs. In the days in NFL when it's all about schools, Joe Gibbs, one of the best coaches. I want to see what he does in Washington with the Redskins. Pittsburgh back in the mix. Seattle on the come. Tampa a year removed. New England still the champs. Hello. And they mean to be repeat champs. We shall see. Hey, we will see you all at halftime. We hope you've enjoyed the ESPN's return to the Pro Bowl. Tom Jackson, Michael Irvin, Steve Young, Chris Morton. Pretty good game over all of us. Enjoy the game as the Pro Bowl returns here in Hawaii to ESPN. We had it once upon a time in the late 80s and early 90s, and now it's back. We plan to give you a real treat. This is the time. Aloha, welcome to the Pro Bowl. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, welcome to the Pro Bowl. Aloha. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you can't bring this weak ass stuff up in this holly holly if you're going to distract. Triple T's going to attack. You leave one of my boys again, and I'm going to lay your pretty fast skirt out. Because there ain't no kahuna bigger than Triple T. Woo! <laughs> Many of the players were simply flummoxed when they found out terrible Terry Tate was added to the Pro Bowl roster. Get your news out of that playbook, McNair! Woo! If my job is to motivate my team, minimize distractions, and maximize pain... I got it, man. <laughs> Woo! Well, you know Triple T gonna butter that roll all day, every day. Aloha, Dante! Run, Twinkle Toes, run! Terry's nurturing. First, no one knows no party. No party. His gentle guidance this week has really helped these first-time Pro Bowlers maintain their focus. So you want to work on your swing, huh? 25. Wait a minute. Hold on, son. You dancing like you got a name in your shorts. I just want to make sure everybody's here having good, clean fun. No problem. One, two, three, 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 three. Baby, baby, baby. Baby, baby, baby. I got the feeling. Mr. Tate has taken it upon himself to ensure that everyone here in Honolulu gives no less than 110 percent. But I just wanted some boy. Boy? Who you calling boy, sugar snaps? I got the boy right here, son. Whoa! Tiny bubble. Make me feel the bubbles. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. I don't care if it's your first Pro Bowl or your seventh, whether you're a fan or a part of the media. I'm making my business to make sure you take care of your business. The world wants to know, Foxers or Breeze? <laughs> Julian, Foxers? Get a nanny pandy question, is that, son? I must say, having Triple T here to motivate the teams has allowed me to kick back, relax, 
and really enjoy this whole Pro Bowl week. Giant and Bubba. You can't help on the pain train, baby! Woo-hoo! 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 Make me happy. Make me feel fine. Welcome to beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii, where it's always a sunny 82 degrees for the AFC-NFC Pro Bowl game at Aloha Stadium. Make me happy. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick. It's great to have you with us. It's a thrill for all of us at ESPN to have this game again. And we're going to be bringing it to you in a way you've never seen it before. Twelve players wired for sound, including Pro Bowlers like Ray Lewis and LeVar Arrington, and all six quarterbacks, including the league's co-MVPs, Steve McNair and Peyton Manning, Joe. Well, you know, like Peyton Manning finally put to rest all those stories about he can't win a big game, he can't win a playoff game. He certainly did. He got within one game of the Super Bowl. 29 touchdown passes, another 4,000 season, a record-setting season for Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts. And, boy, the guy you're so excited about seeing here is Steve McNair the real conscious, the real leader of the Tennessee Titans, a man that's probably known more for his toughness than his ability to do anything with the football, although it's his ability to what he was able to do with the football that got him here to the Pro Bowl. Steve McNair is one of 41 players that are here for the first time, Michael. 41 guys. It's unbelievable. And the emotion and the excitement that they're going to have. And we're happy for all of them. Thank you, Joe. One of the unique aspects of this game has always been special teams. All these guys have been stars all their lives and some of them haven't been on special teams Paul since they were in high school well Michael this is my favorite part of this football game is special teams you've got the four best kickers in football here you've got the two best return men here including Kansas City Chiefs return man Dante Hall last year he had four touchdowns and returns two kickoffs two punts the question is in this ball game is who's going to be able to go downfield and tackle him you know Michael I have the feeling he may just get four touchdowns today all right, thank you, Paul. And when we come back to Honolulu, we will meet the starters for the NFL's 2004 Pro Bowl. Now let's take a look at today's FedEx Air Stats. Visa presents ESPN Skycam, innovative technology on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Visa Skycam provides some of the most unique and memorable images ever seen from angles no other single camera in the world can achieve. And we're excited to bring it to you on all of our NFL telecasts. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineups for the National Football Conference All-Stars. First, the defensive starters. At defensive end, from the St. Louis Rams, number 91, Leonard Little. From the New York Giants, number 92, Michael Strahan. Our interior lineman from the Carolina Panthers, number 77, Chris Jenkins. From the Dallas Cowboys, number 97, Leroy Glover. At linebacker from the Washington Redskins, number 56, LeVar Arrington. From the San Francisco 49ers, number 98, Julian Peterson. From the Chicago Bears, number 54, Brian Erlacher. <laughs> Playing cornerback from the Detroit Lions, number 32, Dre Bly. <laughs> from the Washington Redskins, number 24, Champ Bailey. At safety from the Minnesota Vikings, Corey Chavis. And from the Dallas Cowboys, number 31, Roy Williams.
And now the NFC starters on offense at wide receiver from the Arizona Cardinals, number 81, Anquan Bolden. From the St. Louis Rams, number 81, Torrey Holt. A tackle from the St. Louis Rams, number 76, Orlando Pace. From the Dallas Cowboys, number 76, Flozell Adams. At center, from the Minnesota Vikings, number 78, Matt Burke. Playing guard from the Green Bay Packers, number 62, Marco Rivera. From the Dallas Cowboys, number 73, Larry Allen. At tight end from the Atlanta Falcons, number 83, Algie Crumpler. At fullback from the San Francisco 49ers, number 40, Fred Beasley. And running back from the Green Bay Packers, number 30, Amon Green. And starting at quarterback from the Minnesota Vikings, number 11, Dante Culpepper. Now the starters for the American Football Conference All-Stars, first on defense. At defensive end from the Miami Dolphins, number 93, Adewale Ogunleye. From the Indianapolis Colts, number 93, Dwight Freeney. The interior lineman from the Jacksonville Jaguars, number 93, Marcus Stroud. And linebacker from the Buffalo Bills, number 51, Takeo Spikes. From the Tennessee Titans, number 53, Keith Bullock. From the Baltimore Ravens, number 52, Ray Lewis. From the Miami Dolphins, number 23, Patrick Sertan. At safety from the Baltimore Ravens, number 20, Ed Reed. From the Miami Dolphins, number 31, Brock Marion. And now the AFC starters on offense at wide receiver from the Indianapolis Colts, number 88, Marvin Harrison. From the Cincinnati Bengals, number 85, Chad Johnson. A tackle from the Baltimore Ravens, number 75, Jonathan Ogden. From the Cincinnati Bengals, number 71, Willie Anderson. At center, from the New York Jets, number 68, Kevin Mawai. Playing guard from the Pittsburgh Steelers, number 66, Alan Fanica.
from the Kansas City Chiefs, number 68, Will Shields. At tight end from the Kansas City Chiefs, number 88, Tony Gonzalez. From the Kansas City Chiefs, number 49, Tony Richardson. And running back from the Baltimore Ravens, number 31, Jamal Lewis. And starting at quarterback from the Tennessee Titans, number nine, Steve McNair. And from the world champion, New England Patriots, number 24, Ty Law, number 93, Richard Seymour, number 55, Willie McGinnis. When we come back to Aloha Stadium, we will honor America. Welcome back to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. And with us to sing our national anthem, Beat Club Interscope recording artist, Kylie Dean. When we come back, the kickoff of the 2004 Pro Bowl. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Can I just get a Ray Lewis woo? Woo! No, no, no. That's, that's not the way I know. See, the way I know remembers 2000, Super Bowl 35, 70,000 screaming fans, 140 million people, and then you break out the tunnel. Let me hear you roar! Oh. Uh, yeah, that'd be it. Thank you, Mr. Tate. You're welcome, Mr. Lewis. And now for today's Pro Bowl coin toss, team captains from the NFC, quarterback Dante Culpepper, linebacker Brian Erlacher, and punter Todd Sauerbrunn. And from the AFC, quarterback Steve McNair, linebacker Ray Lewis, and special teams player Gary Stills. 
Joining NFL referee Pete Morelli as today's honorary captains are our legend coaches, Hall of Famers, Don Shula and Marv Levy. And representing our men and women in the United States military stationed around the world, Admiral Walter Doran, commander of the Pacific Fleet, and Rear Admiral Bernard J. McCullough, Commander, Navy Region Hawaii, and Commander, Naval Surface Group, Middle Pacific. Welcome, men, and congratulations. This is Heads, this is Tails. You're the visitor who will make the call. Heads is the call. Admiral Doran will flip the coin. Heads is the call. It is Heads. One the toss. They look to receive. OK. NFC won the toss, elects to receive. Let's go, man. As always, Susie Culver is with us. She's on the field with Tony Dungy. Susie? Well, Mike, so much has been made about the increased level of enthusiasm and excitement because of all the first-timers. What difference do you think we'll see in the game? I think that is true. I think you've got a, a lot of young guys that really want to show what they're all about and that they can play on this level and they deserve to be in the game. So uh, I think you'll see some people really shine today. You have the best players in the world and two great coaching staffs. You know, there's a great exchange of information during the week. What have you learned this week? Well, I've learned a lot. I've learned that uh, what makes good players good is how they approach the game. And our, our guys have been so professional. They've been so great to be around. It's been a lot of fun. This week is about celebrating with your family you know that's kind of been tough on you so here's your chance for a shout out yeah I'd like to say hi to my boys James and Eric school didn't coincide with them being up over here so they had to stay home I miss you guys I'll see you when we get back good luck today thank you sir. let's go over to Chris Mortensen all right here with Andy Reid Andy fortune or misfortunes your third straight Pro Bowl did you use this as a fun week or did you guys take time as an organization to re regroup well we watch a little film on uh the personnel coming up uh, for the offseason here but other than that we relaxed and enjoyed life and you know we had to come back this year to see you Chris oh, that's a good thing I'm glad you did by the way by the way Tony Dungy just said the one thing he really appreciated was the professionalism of his players you had to send Simeon Rice home for disciplinary reasons what can you tell us well that's really between the the league and Simeon and, and myself and uh, you know we did what we thought was best and we move on all right, just one quick, you don't have a long snapper, a true long snapper for this game. Could present a problem with the outcome. Well, we we're going to try to get Berman to suit up for us and snap a few back there, but uh, we'll make it work. We'll see. All right, Mike. More thank you very much. The NFC, as you saw, has won the toss. They have elected to receive on this new field turf field. No more hard as a rock astroturf. You know what? And it's a nice surface. I had a chance to walk around on the field before. It's got a nice feel to it, and I think the players enjoy it because they don't feel like their spikes or their cleats will get caught up in it. You know what? In, in the L1, which is right next to the kicker going down to break the wedge, is the most expensive man in all of football. Dante Hall. <laughs> is, that op is that opposite R1? All right, right across from him. Okay. Mike Vanderjack to kick to Jerry Azuma, who led the league in kickoff return yardage. 29 yards of return. And he goes down, shy of the 22. Zach Thomas on special teams, the middle linebacker <laughs> of the Dolphins. And here comes Dante Culpepper, who was the starter in this game after the 2000 season, only the fifth player ever with two Pro Bowl starts in his first five years. Really got a lot better this year with his completion percentage, up to 65%. Of course, he's the NCAA leader at over 70%. Amon Green and Fred Beasley are the running backs behind Culpepper. Dante the throw on first down, dumps it off to Amon Green, he can't hold it. I thought Dante Culpepper really took strides to him work to work on the maturation process in his game, the decision process, how to get rid of the football. Of course, a year ago, he was stuck in the Randy ratio. Turns out Randy Moss wound up with about 30% of the receptions anyway for the Minnesota Vikings, but that came more natural this year. And I really feel like Dante has just started to scratch the surface to take that offense where they want in Minnesota. Draw play, Green. Nice room up the middle. And Drax Tack was with him to the 32 for a first down. Packers running back Amon Green set new career highs with 1,883 yards rushing this year and 15 touchdowns. The three-time Pro Bowler rushed for over 100 yards 
10 times during the regular season and broke Jim Taylor's single season rushing record that had stood for a long, long time. First down, Green is the only one in the backfield behind Culpepper. And Culpepper throws intended for Antoine Bolden. Ty Law was right there to break it up as he did so many times during the regular season for the Patriots. <laughs> Ty, Ty Law has not missed a beat. He, that was the pro, I mean, the Super Bowl week ago. Here he is now playing exactly the way he played all year long. Here's Ty Law, number 24. Just watch this on Bolden. There's just no chance. That ball, he's there. Ball's there. He thought it was Moose and Muhammad from the Carolina Panthers. He says, I'm, I'm having flashbacks to a week ago. He has played on a bad ankle all year long. Still has it. Green. Hit in the backfield. Spins off the tackle. Gets a block. 45, 49-yard line of Mon Green. Ray Lewis finally got him, but he picked up 16 yards. One of the reasons why it is very, si not simple, but easy to run the football is because you have man-to-man -man blocking. There are no deals by the defensive line. You take a look at Mon Green. Now, they've got him in the backfield, they think. You look at Keith Bullock, number 53. What a great job he does because he trails the whole play. And you're watching. He's going to be blocked on the right-hand side. Now, watch number 53. When he ends up making, he ends up making the tackle. Sean Alexander of the Seahawks checks in, and that pass is batted down to the line of scrimmage. It looked like Gary Stills from his defensive end spot. Gill selected as a special teamer, but Mike's defensive end. The other thing you're going to notice in this game is early in this game, each of the coaches and the players will feel one another out. A lot of these guys have been off for quite a while. And so they don't want to go out and pull a muscle or hurt themselves. And really, the practices haven't been all that tough. About 45 minutes each day before they head for the course. So you'll see him start to gradually get a little more speed going. Culpepper trying to scramble and throws the outlet to Beasley. Beasley gets away from Reed, and then Reed gets in on the final tackle with Bullock. Now, this is just awareness by a quarterback, and one of the reasons why Dante Culpepper is in the Pro Bowl. You know, these are all different players from all different teams. And then here's Dante. He's being rushing. But watch what he does. Watch how cool he is to get a hold. Find B Culpepper. Watch him. He'll find Beasley. Slips. Sees Beasley on the outside. Gets the ball to him. One other thing about that ball is this is a very unfamiliar offense for Dante Culpepper. The last time he was here, he played as a Minnesota Viking in that offense because the coaches were here. Now, all of a sudden, this has been a little bit of a challenge for him. Just the fact that he knew where Beasley was shows you how good he is. Two tight ends on third and two. That pass too high for Torrey Holt. At the sideline, they do not pick up the first down. I love what Joe said. They think he's going to pick up. The toughest thing these guys did all week long was get out of bed. I mean, they, come on. They went to practice. They caught a few balls, and it made it really look kind of easy. I thought they worked hard. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Pro Bowl game. Todd Sauerbrunn in his third straight Pro Bowl. Two of the last three years, he has led the league in average, and he is kicking to Dante Hall, who had four kick returns for touchdowns in four weeks, and a sky-high punt. Fair catch made at the nine. 34-yard kick and no return. We've got a timeout on the field. Scoreless from Honolulu back in a moment. Sean Ellis, Kevin Mawai, and Zach Thomas watched the Super Bowl this year aboard the USS Paul Hamilton with the troops here in Hawaii. Good for them. Made the opening kickoff tackle. Yes, he did. <laughs> and, they're, and, they're, and the AFC is stuck in the sun for most of this game, too. The NFC is now in the shade. Steve McNair back to throw first down. Steve McNair. And throws the bomb to a wide. Chad Johnson! Touchdown! 90 yards! What a way to start! Yeah, you know what else? Did you see what Chad Johnson did? He just dropped the football in the end. What a classy act for a terrific young receiver. Oh, great little half watch. Little play action. Now all of a sudden, the defensive backs let him go. Dre Bly slips down. Comes back. Now look at the speed of this young man. Watch him run. This kid here, this is his first trip, and this will definitely not be his last. Chad Johnson says, I'm just like 7-Eleven. I'm always open. <laughs>
But I'll tell you what, he did. He does one thing here for all young receivers. What he did is he went back, waited, made sure he caught the ball, and then he took off. And that was the second longest pass play in Pro Bowl history. 90 yards. Lightning strikes fast in Honolulu. We'll be back to the AFC NFC Pro Bowl after this. This is just paradise on earth. It's the most beautiful place you could ever hope to see, and we are just delighted to be back here to bring you this game. And the AFC gets a 90-yard touchdown pass. Steve McNair to Chad Johnson to break in the top 7-0. Azuma from the 11. Beasley in front of him. Azuma works his way out to the 32. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike, throughout the season, Chad Johnson got a lot of notoriety for your celebrations and subsequent fines. So explain your decision to play it cool here. Uh, you know, uh, I, I feel I have nothing else to prove. You know, let's just play football. So, you know, uh, this is a good start for the day. And uh, it's going to be like this all day. If people knew you for the celebrations, what they don't know is the work ethic. Give us a little example of what this season was like for you. Oh, man, you know, uh, I, I stay at the stadium, you know, throughout, throughout the day and nights. Wednesday and Thursday, you know, uh, I do whatever I can to get an edge. And that's basically how it goes. Way to light it up on the first play. Give us a little synopsis of that play. Steve McNair, Chad Johnson. Let's take a look. That was, uh, you know, I went in, and uh, it looked like Dre Bly thought I was running across the middle, and I just brought it on back out, and he had no help. And, uh, you know, it's hard to do impossible, and that's covering me, so it's going to be like that from here on now. Congrats, <laughs> Mike. All right, thanks, yeah. Susan. Not a shrinking violet, but it was great to see him just hand the ball to the official. And here's what it sounded like from Steve McNair on that touchdown throw. Let's go, guys. Let's go, guys. Weak right. Let's go fake pass, stretch right. X, B, Z, stalk. Come on, Rick. <laughs> McNair has all six quarterbacks are wired, plus six other players. And Marcus Stroud makes the tackle on that last play, and it will be fourth down the NFC. We'll have some fun again. They can't get anything going. Well, when I had a ch I talked to Brad Childress, the offensive coordinator of the Eagles, of course, is the offensive coordinator here in this game. And in studying their previous films, unfortunately, the Eagles have had a chance to do it over a couple-year period. They found out that the teams that ran the ball seemed to be the ones that had the most success. Last year, they had eight interceptions. And that one is blocked by Ed Reed. He does that all the time. Reed. Paul, you talked about special teams. Well, think about it is you got you got guys, first of all, that have not played it. The punter is the only guy that really is ever out there on the special team. They're not blocking. Beasley is the up back. And he let Reed just go right over top of him. And he blocks it. Not only blocks it, but he, he picks it up. Look at this. He goes over top of Beasley, gets the ball, and gets back to the outside. I mean, that was. I mean, that was just an unbelievable play, one-handed, and then to keep his head up and have the awareness to be able to go after the ball and find it. I, excuse me, it was Chambers was the guy with the up back and not Beasley. And Sauerbrunn never had a chance. Vanderjet, who has not missed anything since December of 2002, gets the extra point. It's 14-0 AFC. Fourteen nothing AFC. Joe, what happened on that last play? Well, what it is, um, you're going to see Ed Reed lined up on the outside. Eventually, Ed Reed lines up on the outside, and what he's going to have a chance to do. Corey Chavis is number 21 on the end of the line of scrimmage, and as Ed Reed makes his move, you see Corey Chavis just keep giving ground instead of stopping him. He gets the one hand up, and then gets the favorable bounce. Reed blocked a lot in Miami, blocked a lot for the Baltimore Ravens. Now Azuma trying to get something started from the NFC and lost his footing and goes down near the 30. Ray Lewis was wired on that kick block. <laughs> to the window! To the wall! Ah! 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 
And those two guys have a special relationship. Ed Reed spends as much time at Ray Lewis's house as Ray Lewis does watching film. Brian Billick's got to be sitting home, the coach of the Ravens, saying, there's one of my guys getting it done. Sean Alexander is the running back. And he'll get the carry. And he'll get the Let's go to Mort. Mike, we uh, talked to Andy Reid about this right before kickoff. No long snapper for this game. The Eagles coaching staff complained about it. They said Matt Burke would be the guy. As it turned out, Burke can't do it, so Mike Flanagan was, Todd. Yeah, Mike Flanagan. You know, I just feel bad that that has to be put on him, that pressure on him. It should, it should never happen. You know, specialists are special for a reason. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's things like that that just happen that cause these things to happen, you know, bad timing and whatnot. But, uh, uh, you know, it, I, I, I've been... And this might be the first punt block ever in a Pro Bowl. I think I got that record, too. <laughs> all right, all right, Mike. <laughs> it's not what he wants. Well, you know, it is a Pro a Bowl. You know, it's, it's a great line. Let's go to Susie. She's with Ed Reed. Susie? Well, Ed, we just heard Todd Sauerbrunn's side of the story. How did you see it? I mean, I just saw the guy taking long. I didn't think I was going to get to it. But he had, like, he messing with the ball or whatnot. And I study this. You know, I know this to a T. And I know one thing about this. Not many guys play on special teams. <laughs> a first-timer here, but you gave up a lot of the luau's and the dinners, didn't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I couldn't do a lot. I was just relaxing, seeing, seeing Hawaii and just really enjoying it. Being off now. Yes, yes. Thank you. Bye. All right, Suze, thanks. Sean Alexander to the AFC 46-yard line. What? You know, we, we didn't... We haven't had a chance to talk about the AFC with this, but the NFC, they're trying to run the ball, which they can do. And the reason that they can do is because they can't do deals on a defensive line, and there's no blitzing by the linebackers. So what you basically have is you have linemen one-on-one -on, -one on the guy in front of you. So all you have to do if you beat him or stalemate him, it, there's, it creates a huge hole in the defensive line. Beasley back in his fullback in front of Sean Alexander. He has made a habit of having huge games on Sunday night football. He came to practice and saw us and said, I feel better already. I may have 200 yards in this game. Well, you know, you take a look at Sean Alexander. You take a look at this guy now, 1,407 yards. But this, you know, he, this guy can get to a hole faster than most. I think the Seattle, I think he's the foundation of why the Seattle Seahawks, first of all, made it to the playoffs against the Green Bay Packers this year, but you'll also see Matt Hasselbeck, their quarterback here. That could be one of those teams next year that has a real chance to go a lot further in the playoff. Steven Davis is the new running back first down at the 29. And the veteran gets a carry and takes it inside the 25 to the 24. Davis was seventh in the NFL this year, a career high. 1,444 yards rush. Yeah, but look at the guys you got up front. You got Flozell Adams, who's at 360. You got Larry Allen. You got Marco Rivera. Orlando Pace is at 330. Matt Burke at center. I mean, you're talking about the best in their position. Yeah. And you mentioned it, ball blocking one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, that's all they have to do is they just really don't. They don't have to knock anyone out of the hole. All they have to do is contain. They've already rushed for 66 yards. Culpepper play action under pressure. Throws complete to Bubba Franks. And the third year Pro Bowler taken out of bounds by Willie McGinnis. Fucking Dwight Freeney fly. <laughs> wow. Watch Dwight, Dwight Freeney come off the ball. Look at this. He goes, gets off the ball so quick. Orlando Pace tries to get outside on him with a little play action fake. Stephen Davis, he just gives him a whisper going by. Stephen Davis said, what was that? What was that? Did anybody get that number going by? <laughs> Flag down in the secondary. Usually to get around Orlando Pace, you have to spin twice. Goal alignment. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. Now what happens is the rules are a little bit different for the Pro Bowl than they are normally. The defensive backs cannot press, as an example, until the, other, the offense gets inside the five-yard line. So that's one of the rules. They also cannot play what's considered a double zone. Safety's back, uh, corners up. And last guy, that last play, the AFC committed a little infraction. Sean Alexander back in with get it on the delay, makes it to the outside. Inside the 10-5 to the goal line, touchdown! Boy, you want to see some speed. I'm telling you, that is speed. He gets to the outside, and I believe, is that Al Wilson? It was. It's hard to see his numbers in here. But here, here he comes. Watch him break to the outside. Now the speed. That is Al Wilson. Oh, man. 
Uh, he turns it on with, with these guys. You, you, you see running backs, and when you see when they see that goal line, Joe, those eyes are about as big as they're ever going to get. Well, remember the other thing. He's not going to see a lot of Sean Alexander without us on film. So when you prepare right. for a week, you study him, and you get a sense of his speed. Out here in a game like this, in an all-star game, you don't really get that same speed sensation. And Al Wilson can run, too. Jeff Wilkins got a brilliant year with Seth Gordon. Converts, and it's 14-7. to seven. The AFC has had one offensive play. They have 14 points. The AFC with a 14-7 lead over the NFC halfway through the first quarter. And you can play an active role in today's Pro Bowl by helping pick the game's most valuable player. Log on to ESPN.com or NFL.com. Cast your vote. The online results will contribute to the overall tabulation of today's most valuable player. In the AFC, they have a, a little bit of an advantage on the kickoff return because they have four Kansas City Chiefs on this kickoff return team. Dante Hall is the deep man. He waits at the two. Wilkins kicking off. That's a good one. Hall, a yard deep. And Anquan Bolden trailed him and made the tackle. Dante Culpepper was wired. Here's what he did the last series. Red, right, Fox, two, run. I want ready. Run. Yeah. Green, right, snug. 94 solid ghosts. I'm on. Ready? Let's go. Let's turn it up now. Green, right, snug. Fox 2-1. I'm on. Ready? You see how you, you see how short the calls are? Green, right, Fox 2, run, snug. What the coaches try and do, and, and this would be Andy Reid and the, and the NFC and Brad Childress, their offensive coordinator, is just give them something they can pick up, run about 12, 15 passes, about seven runs, and let the guys master it through the course of the week. Jamal Lewis, play action, faking there again, going deep this one for Harrison. Contact with Champ Bailey, no flag. Incidental contact, and, and both guys are looking at the ball, and they just get their feet tied up. Champ Bailey didn't do it on purpose. Martin Harrison is downfield, and it looks like he's going to be able to run to the ball. Here's the ball is laid out. He just runs straight. Now look at right, right at the thing. They're both looking up in the air at the ball. Champ Bailey did not do that intentionally. Maybe. I love to watch Pro Bowl corners run with Pro Bowl receivers. Champ Bailey is just so smooth when he makes his turn and starts to take off. Well, both passes from the AFC have been bombed by McNair. Derek Mason and Himes Ward come in at wide receiver spot for McNair. One tackle gets up to the 22. Brought down by LeVar Arrington of the Redskins. We got to see Jamal Lewis at the end of the year as he went for the single season record. But in the last three, Jamal Lewis has rushed for 4,757 yards. He is third all time in that span behind Eric Dickerson and Earl Campbell. Dickerson, of course, had the single season record that he was chasing. And now the other number 31, Priest Holt from the Kansas City Chiefs, is in. McNair throwing underneath that one incomplete. Bailey knocked it away from Harrison. And that's the difference in this year's game, is players used to get their own numbers if they had the, mo the most seniority in the Pro Bowl. Now they wear the numbers they wear during the regular season. So we'll see a lot of multiple. I think it's great. Well, you've got 31s. you got Brock Marion, number 31 from Miami. Brock, uh, you got 31 Priest Holmes. you got Jamal Lewis, 31. you got Roy Williams, 31. So, Mike, good luck. Very I was going to wear 31. <laughs> <laughs> it was already taken by four guys. And Quan Bolden will go back to await the kick from Fred Craig Hendrick, who had a great year for Tennessee. Booms this one. Drives Bolden all the way back to the 22-yard line. Tequila Spikes waiting for him, wouldn't let him go, and Gary Stills made the tackle. Return of nine after a punt of 55. First quarter action from the Pro Bowl. It's a seven-point game.
14-7 AFC over the NFC. In 2002, NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabue created the Art McNally Award to honor each year the NFL game official with at least 15 years of experience who exhibits exemplary professionalism, leadership, and commitment to sportsmanship on and off the field. This year's Art McNally Award winner is Ben Montgomery, Ben officiated two Super Bowls over his illustrious 22-year NFL career. Congratulations. John Alexander, the running back. A nice hole off the left side again after the 38. Let's check in with Susie. Well, it's been a long time coming for Steve McNair, a first-time Pro Bowl selection. What has this week been like? I tell you, it's been amazing. It's been a whirlwind for me, uh, especially coming in with these uh, great guys. You know, they have a lot of talent here. I wish I could keep them and take them back to Nashville with me, but overall, it's been fun uh, for me and my family. Now, when you go back to Nashville, you have to face maybe a new offense. Frank Wycheck retires. We're not sure. Salary cap, Eddie George. What do you think the office is going to look like this year? Well, I think, you know, right now, it's a lot of puzzle minds in the front office right now. So what are we going to do with Eddie and Frank Wycheck retiring? And hopefully, uh, started uh, you know during the top season to improve and to get better each year it's going to be a change for us and uh, this year it's going to hit us very hard and hopefully we can bounce from it thanks steve thank you dante culpepper with a 49 yard strike to tory Holt, who led the league in catches and yards well i'll tell you what he sees this move right here and he knows tory Holt's out in front and i'll tell you what this ball and patrick sertan this ball was perfectly thrown it's amazing when you watch these receivers in the Pro Bowl, their ability to adjust to the football. We saw Chad Johnson do it on the first touchdown and slow down. There you saw Torrey Holt able to run. And I'm always amazed, and I learned this from Jerry Rice, receivers that are really great can run with their heads still so that they can focus on the ball and the ball's not bouncing. There you saw the case of Torrey Holt do it. Ball start, number 76, offense, five-yard penalty. Still, first down. Movement up front, and that will cost the offense. Torrey Holt, in his first 80 games, has racked up 6,784 yards. Only Lance Allworth ever had more over that span, and it's ahead of Randy Moss and Jerry Rice. You get ahead of Randy Moss and Jerry Rice on any of us, you're doing just fine. And I thought this was his breakout year. He was a sensational this year. Alexander inside the 15 to about the 12. Dwight Fringy made a saving tackle around the ankles. You know, Joe's talking about their heads don't move in practice. We're out watching the practice. Uh, now, this is the Pro Bowl game, and these guys are out there, and they're not clowning around. They're going through the motions. I can't remember one ball hitting the ground. It, yeah, it really is amazing. When they're out here and you watch it, there is a reason for the best in the business are at the Pro Bowl. But when they go out to work, it's not like it's a vacation for them over here. They're still working on that hour that they spend on the field. Sean Alexander, 50 yards on drive, carries. This time he did not have a chance at all. Adewale Ogunleye comes in from his left defensive end position and just buried him. I would say Sean Alexander took a look and he went, whoa, that's all white, man. I can't go there. He watched Sean Alexander stop. Here he comes, Ogunleye comes in, whoa, <laughs> get out of here. The only two 93s on the field. You won. No, there's three. You had every 93, a Gunley, A. Seymour, and Freeney. <laughs> and they were all there. Who made the tackle? The 93. 93. Well, when you, you think of a goodly A, and you got Jason Taylor down there in Miami. Oh. Jason Taylor's got to be sitting. You know, I spent a lot of time in, in the, in the All-Star game in the Pro Bowl, and I'm not there this year. And uh, Awalia goodly A is. And I think this is going to be an inspiration to Jason Taylor to say, you know, I want to go back. Third and 14, Stephen Davis checks in behind Culpeck. Dante scrambles inside the 10 to about the 9, well shy of the first down. I tell you, you know, you know what you really get a chance to see is, is a Goulier. When, when you see guys that, that show their speed, he's over here on the right-hand side. Look how quick he is. Back up then back inside but watch these guys this is a pro bowl game they don't slow down when they get a chance to go one-on-one -on -one, this is gravy for everybody jeff wilkins to try a 28-yard field goal he tied olindo mate's single season mark of 39 converted field goals this year. Great knocks this one through <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. 
every one of the off every one of the AFC defensive linemen lined up. The ball was snapped. They all stood up and turned around to see if the ball was going to go through the uprights. It was beautiful. <laughs> Let's check in with Morty. Has Donovan McNair. Donovan, you're, you were selected the game. You had the rib injury in the NFC title game. What hurt most, the rib or watching the Super Bowl this year? <laughs> well, I've been doing it for the last three years now, so uh, obviously the Super Bowl ranks up there. You know, I've been injured before, so it's not a first. Uh, but, it, I mean, again, you know, it's just you live and you learn. You take the good and just kind of add it in going into the next year and use the bad for motivation. We see you and Tara Owens hanging out on the sidelines. We saw you hanging out around the pool. Uh, any chance to recruit him? What would your recommendation be to Andy Reid? Well, again, let's first say that uh, I love the guys that we have. Uh, very comfortable with the guys. Um, it would be I mean, it would be a good thing for us if we would decide to pick up uh, Terrell Owens. But you know, it's nothing that that I'm trying to just you know overwhelm him with or or try to put any pressure on him. We're just out here having fun. But have you spoken to Andy about Terrell? No comment. No, we haven't. That means yes, he has. No, we haven't. All right, <laughs> All right thanks, Mort. And Andy Reid said uh, we would certainly have to come to an understanding before we thought about bringing T.O. to the Philadelphia Eagles and about I, his behavior. And I don't think that would be a problem. I mean, he, there's lots of guys that have blown up on the sidelines and thrown tantrums, and it, it seems like T.O.'s the one that's got that thing hung around his neck. I, thought, I, I wouldn't mind playing with him. Well, well he's I got would. it hung around his neck because he keeps doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. By you again. <laughs> it's not a question of keep doing it. He's done it on a couple of occasions, and... I think there's a greater upside than there is a downside with Terrell Owens. Tough, huh? You think Joe's been in the sun too much yeah, out here I, at White hey, TV? I, 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 I talked to him for a long he time. He does it a couple of the times a game. Don't buy it. Wilkins to kick to Dante Hall. From the six, can't handle it. Spins off a one tackle, but only makes it back to the 14. Before the ball game, I had a chance to talk to Terrell Owens, and I, you know, I said basically, I said, where would you like to be? And he said, right here. Well, the Eagles are the co the Eagles are the coaching staff for the NFC, and and I really believe that he wants to be a Philadelphia Eagle, but he hasn't ruled out some other places, you know, places like the New York Jets. He feels like there's a place that you know he could get along. Herm Edwards would be one. I think there are different football teams in this league that need his physical presence as a receiver. The most obvious we talk about is the Eagles, but we saw what Carolina did to their receivers in the NFC Championship game. And I still think that it's not a problem for him to come in and be a good team player. Peyton Manning in for the first time, throws incomplete. That ball may have been tipped. I think Bill Parcells ought to get a shot at him. <laughs> yeah, let's give him the Billy Boy for a little while. He'd love to have him. Oh, I bet he would. We had Keyshawn. Peyton Manning, the co-MVP of the NFL, and you can never forget some of the games he had this year. Six touchdown passes against New England, or against New Orleans in his hometown. The comeback against Tampa Bay, he just had a brilliant season. Second down, and Creek Holmes off the right side. Dexter Copley made the tackle at the 17. In week five at Tampa Bay, Peyton and the Colts staged one of the most improbable comebacks in NFL history. Indianapolis trailing 35-14 with less than four minutes to go. Manning rallied the Colts, 24 unanswered points. Then they won the game in overtime, 38-35 on a bandage at field goal. Manning threw for 386 yards in that ball game, and I'll never forget Starting to turn off the television set, saying this isn't going to happen, and then I thought, oh, what the heck, I'll watch for a couple. And I believe that was the game that sort of took away the swagger of the World Team and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They will need to see it go, and they could just line up and go. Man to Derek Mason. All the way to the 10 yard line. I'm going to tell you something. Derek Mason put a move on Troy Benson and froze him. And I mean, he froze him. This ball was thrown deep the entire way. Mason comes down. He puts a little juke, and he was gone. What happens, these corners tend to look at the quarterback. They want to see what's going to happen. Peyton Manning does also a nice job of doing a little pump fake. Here it comes. It. Here's the pump fake. Whoop. Now it's released and gone. Uh, I mean, here's Troy Benson standing there, and Mason's gone. I mean, that, that move that he made on him right there, it was. it's over. 71 yards. First and 10, they'll mark it at the 11. Clinton Portis inside the 10. 
And Portis walked into a little controversy this week when he said he wanted a big raise or he wasn't going to come to training camp, then retracted that statement and said he never said it. Yeah, it's February, you know. Guys <laughs> say a lot of things in February. I didn't mean it. Tom Moore, the, Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator in this game, of course, of the Indianapolis Colts. I was talking to him during the course of the week, and I said, what do you want to do? He said, what do I always do? Throw deep. Well, we've seen three of them so far. Two have been for very big plays. Well, they're averaging on their completions 80.5 yards a catch. That's deep. Two for five. Manning straight back to throw, intended for Mason. The ball got there before he had his head turned. I'll tell you, Mason was not looking. He was not looking at it. You know, I, I think if you take a look at the shadow, he's looking right directly into that sun. And it's very hard to see that thing. Plus, Peyton gets it out of his hands so quickly. This is, talking to Peyton Manning, it's really funny. This is an offense that he, he masterfully runs through the course of the year. All kinds of checks, all kinds of audibles. He comes into this game, there are six runs and 15 passes. Gonzalez, number 88, on the left-hand side of your screen. Manning sets, throws. He's open in the end zone, reaches back. Dre Bly does a nice job of closing on the ball. That's the thing about these corners. They just close so quickly. Of course, Peyton not real comfortable with Tony, throws it outside. Dre just slips it away. Mike Vanderjat, who has made 37 field goals in a row this year. 41 straight over the last one plus seasons both nfl records knocks this one through from 27 and this has been a scoring fest so far big monday tomorrow night on espn number seven or at seven eastern excuse me ben gordon and Ameka okafor lead number five connecticut against chris thomas and the fighting irish of notre dame then at nine eastern at Big 12 clash, Wayne Simeon at number 17, Kansas against Oklahoma State, the 13th ranked team in the nation. This game also available on ESPN HD. It's Big Monday on ESPN. Some another sellout hey, crowd here in Honolulu. You guys are talking about Peyton Manning. There's another one coming out, boys. Eli? Eli's coming. I saw Archie there down. I said, we can name the bank. <laughs> Maybe Eli, national or hey, what? Eli's a coming. I'm telling you right now. Eli is a very, very good quarterback. A couple of good young quarterbacks coming out of college this year. Roethlisberger going to be a pretty good one, I think. Eli. There's two good ones right there. Steve McNair. Trent Green will get his chance a little bit later. I wonder how long it took Donovan to get that hat on. <laughs> hey, I think he's got, I think he copied the hairdo from uh, Hugh Douglas. Could be. You had the big throw. Jerry Azuma is deep. Do you put, do you pull your, do you put it hey, on, do you step do into you, it? Who do you ask? Pull it up over your waist? <laughs> or do you put it on over your head? I don't know. <laughs> Lavernius Coles is back with the Zuma to receive the kick. Azuma from the six. Has a, some room on the outside across the 30 to 31. Peyton Manning wired in that last series. Let's listen. How's it going, all right? You all right? No? Dice right, scat right. Z takeoff, Maui, on one, eh? Corner, trail, trail. Red! Hit! You see, what you do is, is when you're here on the islands of Hawaii, what you want to do is, at least when you're calling plays, throw in one of the islands. Like, you know, you call a play and you say Maui. I mean, that's where Peyton's going. That had nothing to do with the play call. I'm waiting on Molokai. Coming that's up. my favorite. That's the end of the first quarter, and the AFC in a scoring fest leads the NFC 17 10. Aloha, Dante! Oh. You can't outrun the pain train!
Hey, baby! Terry Tate, the office linebacker, keeping everybody in shape out here in Honolulu. He, I tell you, that's a funny man, and he is big. You know, you know the uh, the last two quarters of football that we've had a chance to see, the fourth quarter in the Super Bowl and the first quarter here in the Pro Bowl, 64 points have been scored. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out for anybody who's keeping track. But he didn't have to take his shoes off the count. I know. I've been relaxed for that. Matt Hasselbeck will get his shot at quarterback starting from the 31 yard line. And they'll kill the play. Looked like one of the interior linemen moved early. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 62 the offense. Five yard penalty still. First down. Marco Rivera got an early start, the Green Bay guard. Matt Hasselbeck just had a tremendous record. Seahawks franchise marked 3,841 yards passing, 26 touchdowns this year. And was excited about his brother Tim's success in Washington as he was his own this year. Yeah, he was. We uh, had yeah, another first. We had Tim's first game. That we did. He played very well. Fake the end around. Hasselbeck dumps this one off and Ray Lewis <laughs> makes the tackle as Stephen Davis took it at the 35. <laughs> you think Ray cares whether it's an all-star game or not? Well, you uh, talk about Ray Lewis. Now, these guys are all friends, but not now. Not during this 60 minutes. Here it is. A little dump and watch this shot. Bang! Uh, oops. Come in here. And you know exactly what he said. Don't come in here. Stephen Davis is going, didn't I go through this a week ago? Castle <laughs> back under pressure and popped from behind by it's Casey Hampton from the Steelers. And what a terrific job Casey Hampton has done, not just in this game, but all year long. Remember, he plays nose tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers. People think that that position is just one where somebody's going to take up space and allow the interior linebackers to make plays. Casey Hampton is not that kind of guy. He went right through Marco Rivera. Now, Rivera's not a small guy in his own right. And boy, did he have a terrific season. He dedicated himself to get quicker, faster, and stronger. Derek Mason is going to have to do kick return duties because Dante Hall is in the locker room with Bruce Ritz. That's all the way to the 10. And Peterson downfield with that great speed holds him to a loss of one after a punt of 54. Back to Honolulu in a moment. ESPN's coverage of the AFC and FC Pro Bowl brought to you by TD Waterhouse, the alternative to higher price brokers like Marilyn Schwab. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Michelob Ultra, lose the carbs, not the taste. And the document company, Xerox, there's a new way to look at it. Just to recap the first quarter with you from uh, beautiful Hawaii. We had the first punt block for a touchdown in the history of the Pro Bowl and two of the longest passes in the history of the Pro Bowl, and that's just in one quarter. And there's a chance that the AFC might just throw deep again. Peyton Manning takes over at the 10. Well, you think, you know, this is a game of a lot of fun, but then you bring these young guys in, like Roy Williams, who believes that, well, if you're going to hang yourself out here, I'm going to hang you up. I mean, that ball goes through, and Roy Williams is as clean. Bang, look at that. He hit his helmet right into his shoulder pads, and Todd Heath goes, you're down. And that's Dexter Coakley in coverage. We all know how fast Dexter Coakley is. Todd Heath says, let's not call that one. <laughs> Draw play, Jamal Lewis never had a chance hit inside the five and dragged down by Strahan. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike, last week, John Elway was selected to the Hall of Fame. You know, the guys talk about what it's like to show up here as the Super Bowl champ. What's it like to show up here knowing you're going into the Hall of Fame? Uh, it's different. You know, it's hard to believe that I've been out for five years, but, uh, you know, it's a great honor to come up here. And I remember so many times playing here and watching my heroes walk through there that it's kind of, it's a little bit different having me walk through it. 
you were selected to nine pro balls. I know it's limited offense for you guys, but what play made your eyes light up? You know, anytime you have a chance to make a big play, and I think that, you know, anytime with the receivers that we always play with in this game, you get a chance. Anytime you can get it, send them on a go route, you want to send them on a go route. John, thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Peyton Manning chased out of the pocket, barely avoided the sack, and then throws it incomplete. John Elway, selected to the Hall of Fame, set an NFL record. He had 148 wins as a starting quarterback, and his 300 touchdown passes rank fourth all-time in NFL annals. And he completed his career by leading the Broncos to two Super Bowls. What a way to go out. I was always amazed at John's ability, not just to be able to throw the football from the pocket with a rocket arm, but to be able to, like we saw in that highlight, just flick his wrist and also run with the football. Hendrick gets a nice bounce on that, goes all the way to the 45-yard line, and Anquan Bolden, who was back to receive it, can't get up to it. The kick, 49 yards, good starting spot for the NFC. Second quarter at 17 to 10, AFC over the NFC. The day after learning that his father had passed away, Brett Favre led the Packers to a 41-7 romp over the Raiders on Monday Night Football in Week 16. He threw for not 399 yards, four touchdowns, both season highs. And if the level of admiration of the American football public couldn't go any higher before, it did for that courageous performance by Brett Favre, who was selected to the Pro Bowl and had fun this year. Stephen Davis breaks a tackle across midfield down near the AFC 40-yard line. Brett Favre played hurt all year with that broken thumb, and he went home to Mississippi to let that heal. And uh, we just, you know, we're in that group. We hope Brett Favre keeps playing forever. And the other thing is, is, you know, Matt Hasselbeck has taken his place here in the Pro Bowl. Of course, Mike Holmgren had Brett Favre for so many years in Green Bay. Now he has Matt Hasselbeck in Seattle. And I really think Matt Hasselbeck has a terrific upside. When he joined Seattle when Mike uh, Holman made the deal for him, he wasn't quite the quarterback that Mike had thought, but he sure had developed this year. You look at his own football. Hassel back to Bubba Franks. He has it at the 21, scooped it right off the grass. I'll tell you, Hasselbeck throws his ball just a, out a little bit further, and Franks has got maybe have a touchdown. Bubba Franks, you know, these are the things, <clears throat> when he plays with Favre up in Green Bay, Bubba knows that that ball's coming just a little bit quicker. Now, here comes the ball out now. Watch him go down to get the ball off the ground. Make sure you have the catch, then get back up. I had a chance to talk to Bubba Franks about Brett Favre throwing the football. I said, did he have a thumb problem? He said, no. He said, that had the people were wrong. He said, the guy still throws just as hard as ever. Among Green down to the 20. All of his receivers had thumb problems because it was hard as he could. Your problems. Let's go to Morton. First year safety, Roy Williams, first year at time Pro Bowl. Boy, were you trying to prove that it was a it's a real football game with that hit on Todd Heath? No, I actually man, I let up. You let up? I let up, actually, <laughs> man. I waited for him to come to me, then I hit him. But I mean it's a football game. That's what we get paid to do is have fun and hit people. All right, Mike. <laughs> I, I don't know that he let up much on no, that one. Man. I think he did. I, oh, think, yeah. I think that was like a 50-percenter shot. Todd Heat doesn't want to see the 100 percent. Hassel back to the sideline, incomplete, intended for Keenan McCardell. Chris McAllister with a real nice hit on the sidelines. Put both, I chance to play golf for both Keenan McCardell and Chris McAllister. Keenan's got a little better game than Chris. Chris is working on his, and uh, Keenan's is pretty polished. I played with you too, Paul. Don't look at me that way. And, and I just, lost to you. Just to set the record straight. I just want to let everybody know in the world that I beat Joe Theismann out of his lunch money. Hey, so did I. Well, you should. <laughs> so did you. So did you. That's you're right. getting a Both. shot of hole, for goodness sakes. I've got to defend myself a little bit. Well, we're not saying we have quite the game, but uh, it's the end result that matters, isn't it? Hasselback. Knocked away by Bullock. Nice play as he was trailing Bubba Franks. You know what? You, know, what, what I, you love to watch Pro Bowl games, you know, because all of the really fast linebackers, I think, are all here. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. And you look at what Keith Bullock does here. Look at this. Eye on the ball, up in the air, knocks the ball down. Bubba Franks has no chance. Hasselbeck said, no, it's my fault. 
I should have thrown it higher and further. Now you made a great point earlier, Paul. That is directly into the sun where he threw the ball. Just the fact that Bullock could get his hands up and find it was an accomplishment. Wilkins, who has already hit from 28, will try from 38. There's that pass rush or that uh, <laughs> rush again. The NFC takes advantage of good field position back to the Pro Bowl after this. The AFC's lead is now 17-13. It's a special feature of today's game. You can help choose the play to be run by the offenses of both the NFC and AFC squads. Log on to NFL.com. Vote for a play you'd like to see used in the game. Later, that winning play will be communicated to the offensive coordinators, and they will run it in the fourth quarter. And if you pick the wrong play, you'll all be fired. That's the way it works in the NFL. If the play doesn't work, we will all come to your house. That's right. Derek Mason, deep to return for the AFC as the lead has been cut to four. Oh, I got a better. Oh, you know what? We'll send Tate. You guys doing all this work? Paul, what do you think of an onside kick? Huh? <clears throat> Can't do it. I know, but what do you think anyway? Mike Martz was here. He might try it. <laughs> of course, the Rams, everybody thought that that was going to be one of those teams. It might be the Eagles and the Rams battling it out in the championship. But what a great job the Carolina Panthers did all year long. What a terrific Super Bowl. Mason to go on. Leading his way across the 20. Takes it out of bounds to the 27. Go back to that last NFC defensive series. Troy Vincent wired for the Pro Bowl. Nice, nice. Nice move on that double move. That's right, sir. When, when you get when a guy does it, he'll turn around and tell him, nice move, Troy Vincent, one of a one of many unrestricted free agents uh, in this Pro Bowl game. So some guys may be wearing different helmets in the game. Ford is trying to get outside the camp, and Arrington is waiting for him as he cuts back. This is that play that uh, Peyton Manning was telling us about it, remember with Edgar and James, it's that stretch play, and he said. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to pull a muscle trying to get out there. But what Edgerin does different than Portis, because I don't think Denver runs it this way, is that Portis was waiting too long. Once you stretch, you get the ball in your hands. Now you've got to get upfield in a hurry. You can't stretch it all the way across the field. And Manning, as a quarterback, knows what this stretch play is like, so he knows it. I'm curious to see how Steve McNair does and Trent Green when it happens. Second and nine, Portis straight up the middle. And Kamir Bajabia Miller who was a last-minute replacement for Simeon Rice, makes the tackle. And Portis off to a brilliant start in his career. 1,500 yards rushing in each of his first two seasons. Only Edron James of the Colts and Eric Dickerson of the Rams were able to do that to begin their careers in the NFL. Uh, does he want more money or does he? I'm sure he does. He's scheduled to make $380,000, and that's not enough for a 1,500 yard back-to-back -back running back. Pulls it back. Plenty of time. Deep down the middle. Under throw intended for Harris. Oh, Champ Bailey had a shot at Champ just waited. Well, Peyton came to him a little bit late. Of course, how many times have we seen Peyton Manning throw this pass to Marvin Harrison? What happens is Champ Bailey is just hanging back. He's looking all the way in at Peyton Manning. Now he makes the break on the ball. Here comes Roy Williams. He's just gonna he's gonna knock Marvin down. And well, Roy Williams, he, he's not looking at the ball. His job is to get Marvin. Oh, that's if Marvin right. catches it, he's going to kill him. Champ, Champ had a real legitimate <laughs> shot at that one. Peyton is only one out of seven so far, but the one was 71 yards. Tony Richardson with a rare carry across the 45 to the 46. Richardson, the fullback from the Kansas City Chiefs, who sent nine players over here. You know... When you look at it, Michael, at fullbacks, and we talked about this all year long, it was it was very, very hard to find a fullback, yeah. a legitimate fullback in the National Football League. And, but it, it's hard to pick the best one. I mean, Fred Reasley on the other side did a terrific job in San Francisco, 
And of course, Priest Holmes just thinks the world of Tony Richardson and the job that he did block the Third down, about three, moving up front. Oh, Nate, you stinker, you. He went hard, Cal. And everybody's just trying to get their hands off the ground. Well, he needs five, four yards, so he had to do it. number 77 of the defense. Five-yard penalty automatic, first down. That's Chris Jenkins from the Panthers. You know, you, you really do. When, 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 when Man, and Manning probably does that as well as anyone in the National Football League. You look over there, Joe, and he says, oh, second and four. Yeah, third, third, and four, one, third and four, I get the ball inside, I got first and ten. I get a chance to throw another ball. <laughs> Got Harrison in the ball game. All the Hines Ward of wide receivers. Gonzalez the tight end in the slot. And Chris Holmes back to the running back. And he rifles this one for a heat. And he's hit by Aeneas Williams. I tell you what. I'll tell you. Oh, Todd, Todd, baby. Get out of there, Todd. Todd's going, wait a second. I, I'll tell you, Aeneas Williams could have killed him. I'm telling you, number 35, Aeneas Williams could have killed him. And you don't think that Todd Heat knows he's coming? Watch this throw. Watch his head. Right here. Well, get out. I mean, Aeneas right there really could have hammered him, and he didn't. Todd, Todd Heaps going, wait a minute. When did I get the helmet with the bullseye? Eight times in the Pro Bowl, he's coming to the corner. Now he comes as the second. Second and ten. Three times. Runs into a wall. And is pushed back shy of the 50-yard line. Priest Holmes set an NFL record this year, 27 rushing touchdowns, and that broke Emmett Smith's record set in 1995. Just an incredible performance. 27 rushing touchdowns. Every time you turned around, the guy was hurtling over the goal line. Well, it wasn't one. It was like, okay, three in this game, three in that game. I mean, the 100-yard games, uh, just an incredible performance by an incredible player. Where did he come from? Ball well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Jamal Lewis is the other one. I mean, basically, they have both balls are running backs in this game. Manning under pressure. Throwing deep. Harrison. Touchdown. You know what? He wasn't going there. He really wasn't going there until he turned and he saw Marvin and in a sprint. He just let it fly. But he's really glad he did. Oh, yeah, he is glad. But at first, he was not going there. And then he saw Marvin make the break through the defense. And once he did, I don't know if anybody's going to catch him anyway. That time, he caught Champ Bailey peeking a little bit. Peyton's looking, looking, looking. Now he hangs it up. And Marvin does an excellent job of getting on top of Champ, who couldn't find the last one. And Nias can't quite get over to help him out. Now remember, the safeties have to stay inside the hash marks. They can't cheat outside at all. Vanderjen for the point after a 50-yard touchdown strike to Marvin Harrison. Peyton Manning threw 29 touchdown passes this year, and Marvin Harrison caught 10 of them. Welcome back to Honolulu. The last series, Peyton Manning wired for that touchdown pass. What we got here? What we got here? Yeah, good. Nice left, scat right. X takeoff, Maui on one. Good job, huh? There we go. There we go. Doesn't celebrate much, does it? No. And that doesn't work again. Class act. You'd get tired celebrating. <laughs> Jerry and Zuma on the return across the 20. 30. Great speed. And Heinz Ward will make the tackle up at the 45. Let's go to Susie. Well, a familiar duo, Marvin Harrison, Peyton Manning. Marvin, what's the comfort level of having your own quarterback in your own system? Uh, it's a tremendous comfort level. Uh, I think of the first pass that threw to me during the game. You know, the cornerback squatted on the play, and I had, I had to run the route. But if Peyton was in there, I'd have just ran deep, knowing that he was squatting, then we would have just hooked up and had six early on. The play-by-play the, the play of the touchdown. Well, like I said, it was kind of based off that first play uh, that Steve threw to Marvin Champ Bailey squad, and that's why he's one of the better corners in the league because he is so aggressive. Sometimes that can uh, uh, that can cost you in a Pro Bowl. So it was third and eight. Um, most teams try to run just the first down, play at eight yards. Marvin ran eight yards, kind of stuttered, went right by him for the touchdown. 
what do you think is going to happen just in terms of everyone's talking about you and contract talks and this week your agent talked with the Colts, maybe just a little rocky start to talk to me. What are you wishing for? <laughs> Going arena. Uh, I tell you, Susie, it's been a great six years being able to just to answer questions about football and about guys like Marvin Harrison. And obviously, I understand being, it being a pertinent question that I am up for contract. But I guess in my first six years, it served me well never to make a public comment on my contract. So I'm going to keep it that way. So basically, what I'm giving you is a long-winded answer to say I have no comment on my contract. <laughs> Well, if we had to get a, a wide receiver who's caught a lot of touchdown passes from you, what would you make happen? He's, he's got to come back. If I, I got to, if I got to take a pick, he's got to come back. So he's definitely going to be in Indy next year, hopefully. So I got to speak for him. Thanks, guys. Okay, thanks. Now, when your star receiver is saying he's willing to take a, uh, a pay cut, that's pretty good. Well, your, your star receiver is going to be a free agent next year. I'll go out on a limb and say that Peyton Manning will be the highest paid quarterback in the history of professional football for quite a while, Bob. Back trying to throw this one's incomplete. Let's go to Mort for more on Peyton Manning. In fact, as Susie pointed out, Tom Condon, the representative of, Tom, of Peyton Manning, did have his first first face-to-face -face meeting with Bill Polian, the president of the Colts. In fact, Condon presented three different options on contracts, all of which were rejected initially by Polian. One of the things that did happen in those discussions is that Polian said, if we don't get him signed, he takes up $18 million with a franchise tag. A lot of players could get cut. One of those names on that list was Edron James. Of course, it's just rhetoric now. Well, you know, Mort, I have a feeling those three options were 150, 175, or 200 million dollars. Take whichever one you like. I think the biggest thing's going to be the signing bonus. I mean, yeah. Obviously, I think that's got to be the biggest thing that Bill Polian has to look at. As a matter of fact, when you think of the free agency, let's go back to Terrell Owens. The numbers floating around for Terrell Owens is 20 million dollars as a signing bonus for a wide receiver. And that's not going to happen. I mean, you know, you've got Troy Vincent in, in this game as well. That guy, <coughs> Peyton Manning, is going to be at Indianapolis. I don't care what anybody says about what kind of money. I agree He's with that. Period. Now you're working around whatever else you have to do. National back pump fake down the middle for Bubba Franks and overthrown by a scribe. You know, I'm, I'm look, we're looking again. It, it really looked like Bubba Franks never saw the ball. And they are throwing that ball out to the right where the sun is. And it is directly in their eyes. Bubba Franks here, of course, because uh, Jeremy Shockey had to withdraw from the game. The Giants tight end. Take a look on the right-hand side of the screen, and you're going to see Bubba Franks. It really looks like he doesn't even see the ball. Here he goes down like this. You see the ball out in front? It's, it's hard for them to see. Here comes one of the more exciting plays in all of uh, pro football when the field goal and you can't rush it. The pro ball. The pro ball. But this is a 50-yarder for Jeff Wilkins. Ooh. And short. Jack. Wilkins, who hit from 28 to 38, has now missed from 50. Just another lousy day in paradise. <laughs> What's the temperature, Mike? 82. 82. But the wind chill's 81. Okay. For all of our fans Always in the 82. Northeast. The wind out of the northeast uh, at about, um, what? 12 to, 15. 12 to 15. If I were the weatherman here, I'd like tape for like a month at a time. 82, 76, partly cloudy, and a little chance of rain, a little uh, chance of rain. May get, may get some precipitation in one of the other islands. The AFC has only three completions in this game. 90 yards, 71 yards, and 50 yards. Not bad. There's the fourth. Jamal Lewis underneath. In the NFC territory. <laughs> Hate Manning was going deep. <laughs> you know, he looked, 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 and I'll say, all right, Jamal, we'll give you one. Well, I think that's You're not running it, we'll give you one. That's the advantage of having your coaching staff here. Of course, Peyton Manning and Indianapolis Colt, Tony Dungy and his entire staff here, Tom Moore's the offensive coordinator. So Peyton knows exactly where he has to look and what he wants to do from a comfort level throwing the football. Oh, he's directing traffic. First man there in a big NFC pile. Played golf with him yesterday. Did he beat you too? <laughs> well, can I ask you a question? Can I just ask you a question? What did, what did you have, a 12 some? <laughs> You're really setting yourself up. Jamal went over the 2,000 yard mark. Only Eric Dickerson has ever had a better year running the football 
and he is just the perfect combination of size and speed. And he plays in the perfect offense yes, that, he does. that emphasizes the run as much as Baltimore does. Manning goes to the shotgun. Thanks to draw that throws up these to Mason. And Troy Vincent will wrap him up. Derek Mason's one of those guys, I mean, you look at Bennett and, and McCarrens and the different receivers that really came on in Tennessee this year. Derek Mason, I thought, was the glue that held it together. At one point, he was one of the youngest guys. Then all of a sudden, he comes back and really, really, I thought, was a real stabilizing force for the wide receiving core and gave Steve McNair a nice comfort level to work with. Well, the Titans felt it was the most productive season of his career. That wide receiving core is going to be special coming up. Lewis with a stutter step and then goes inside the 30-yard line. Derek Mason set career highs this year, 95 catches, 1,303 yards to earn his second trip to the Pro Bowl. Had a season-high 177 receiving and three touchdowns in Week 6 against Houston. He has had three straight 1,000 receiving yards. Each year, got better and better as far as his receptions. And he sets up, throws to Mason. First down, down to the 22. Coming up on two minutes. They, you know, it just looks like the AFC is just whatever they want to do. I mean, it, well, now wait a second. There's, you can't press the wide receivers. I mean, so the guys have to play five yards off on both sides. So, I mean, yeah, they can right. do whatever they want Let to do. Let me start all over again. You shut up. <laughs> the AFC seems to do whatever they want to do. And the NFC can't do what they want to do. So now you want to jump in? <laughs> we'll jump in when we come back with the two-minute warning from the Pro Bowl. <laughs> Coming up shortly, the Toyota Halftime Show. Chris Berman and Michael Irvin will have first-half analysis from the Pro Bowl and a celebration of the 25th anniversary of the Pro Bowl here at Aloha Stadium in Hawaii. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime Show. You can't go anywhere else. We hope has to stay here. Absolutely. Part of that offensive line of the AFC is Willie Anderson. He's the first offensive lineman to go to the Pro Bowl since 91. And Anthony Munoz anchored so many. Peyton Manning goes to Johnson. Another Bengal. He's down to the 15-yard line. And Anderson is one of those guys who has labored in virtual obscurity his entire career. And finally... Uh, gets a chance to get some publicity after Marvin Lewis went there and turned the franchise around. Eight years in the league, and what a job. You talk about Marvin Lewis. What a job John Kitna did for him as a ball back. He was terrific. I mean, Chad Johnson, this young receiver, this kid is so talented. It's unbelievable. I mean, Cincinnati's going to be another one of those teams you better look out for next year. Peyton short set throws to Mason. Troy Vincent makes the tackle. Couldn't go inside because Coakley was there. They're getting closer to the area where the corners can press. Not that they want to, but they can. Joe, inside you set a lot of records out here, completion percentages and everything else. Uh, it, it had to be a wonderful feeling to come out here and know that defensive backs couldn't get a lot of help from safeties. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in a second. Quickly, let's go to Chris Morris. I'm here with Aeneas Williams. Nobody knows this story, Aeneas. You tell it. You woke up at 4 in the morning? Uh, well, 4 in the morning, and, and my wife two days ago had some kind of virus or something. And I woke up about the same this morning, about 4, throwing up, and, and with a bad diarrhea, ended up having to go into the hospital for a little while. I came from the hospital uh, straight to here. 10 a.m., the, the staff told you not to play. Why did you play? Well, guys, come over here. One thing is I don't want guys to get more than the lower they need to get. So I just wanted to go out and give it an effort to see if I could do it. And, and I knew the more I play, I'd be okay. I'm feeling a little bit, but I'd be all right. This guy took three IVs, guys. Okay, he's something special. Go ahead, Paul. Well, yeah, yeah. Don't look at us. Go ahead. No, no, the guy, the guy is tough. And, he's, and here's a guy that really, when they tell you you don't have to play, once this thing is blown up and kicked off, they're all playing. hands on it, couldn't hold it, intended for the tight end, Tony Gonzalez. Well, Dennis Erickson, the coach of the San Francisco 49ers, said that Julian Peterson, Peterson was his best player on his football team, and I believe that. I mean, the guy just, he, he's like the Willie McGinnis's, and, and the guys that can play with their hands down as well as, run, I mean, play, cover the pass, 
as well as rush the passer. Great speed, great ability, and very strong for their size. He played four spots in the game this year. Linebacker, defensive end, strong safety, and corner. Complete intended for Mason. Vincent was there, so was Copley. Boy, I tell you what, with Mason, Mason ends up here, but I don't know if, if, if Peyton is looking at Mason or is it who's coming across the back of the end zone? Is that Heat? Heat was a, is the guy in the back of the end zone, and it looked like like uh, Peyton was going to throw to him, or at least try to get it. Looked like Kahi getting hit again. It's <laughs> sort of been the theme of the first half of this Pro Bowl. Is Todd Heat? Where are you? Third and goal. Ward and Johnson are the wide receivers. Manny throws this one. Tony Gonzalez touchdown. That ball was thrown behind the tight end, Tony Gonzalez. Yeah, but that time he went to get it. It was thrown hard, too. It was thrown hard. Tony Gonzalez, I mean, when he comes off the line of scrimmage, he takes that wide switch. Now, right away, as soon as he makes the turn, he knows the ball's coming. Uh, that time, Dre Bly, great, great adjustment. I'll tell you, Dre Bly would have had a shot at the same move as he, as he did in the first quarter, except he slipped just ever so slightly and couldn't get his hand in there. Bandit Jack to the point after. Mr. Perfect is perfect again. The Chiefs' Tony Gonzalez has enjoyed his team here in Hawaii. As usual, he is an avid fisherman, but on Thursday, he got to go spear fishing for the very first time. He caught three spears. Yes, he did. Oh, look at the... I mean, a little tiny fish. Come on, you got to get something. That, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be like an appetizer over here for him. Yeah, I was asking you a question earlier. You hold the highest completion percentage here, the most completions in a game with 21. It must have been fun knowing that the safeties wouldn't be able to help that much. You had one-on-one -on -one with great receivers. You play with great receivers. You know the offensive line is going to, you know, has the pride to be able to protect people. No interceptions. No interceptions in two of them. And no interceptions. I can't say that about my career, but I can't no, no. say no, that about I'm, here. I'm, I'm giving you credit. That Thank is, you. That's phenomenal. Thank no you. interceptions. But he, yeah. you're absolutely right, Mike. It's bad as you threw the ball. <laughs> Let's check in with Susie. Susie, what do you have? You know, Tony, the first time you and Peyton hooked up at a Pro Bowl, he said, I got to have that guy. What's the connection between you two? I don't know. We talk a lot during our week. We're like, hey, I can get him on this route. I can get him on that route. And he's like, I'm going to put the ball on you. So be prepared to catch it. That first one, I dropped it. And he was a perfect throw. And so I was like, I can't drop it this time. I got to make a catch. Saw you out doing some fishing. How do you make the best of this whole week? Oh, you got to have a good time. It's so easy to have a good time when you come over here. The Hawaiian people are great. Being around all the guys, all the all the superstars of the NFL, it's just a fun time. Thanks. All right, thanks. Tony Gonzalez, uh, not only one of the best at his position, one of the best in the entire league. Jeremy Shockey gets mad at me when I say that I think Tony Gonzalez is the best tight end in football. But it's uh, Jeremy's close, but I don't know if he's there yet. Beasley, the up back, takes the kick off and gets it out to the 39 yard line with 47 seconds to go, first half. I think you'd do all right with either Tony Gonzalez or Jeremy Shockey. You'd get by just fine. But the guy that's really been impressive to me, actually through the whole year, too, is the guy that's replaced Jeremy Shockey, and that's Algie Crumplin out of Atlanta. Of course, Jim Mora Jr. taking over as the head coach down there. Michael Vick hopefully will play a full season and be healthy. That ought to be a really exciting season for the Atlanta Falcons. Could you have had a better season than the last week with the Super Bowl? back under pressure intercepted and that one is picked off Patrick Sertan McAllister thought he had a shot at it and went right to the Miami Dolphin corner he's a little bit familiar with interceptions had seven this year there they go I tell you this ball was thrown right to Patrick Sertan he's the only one sort of looking yeah Patrick Sertan he's going to be out back on the outside and here goes the ball. 
Look at this. It went right into his hand. That was that was kind of easy. Matt let that one get away a little bit high. Chris McAllister tries to make a play on it. Patrick Sertan does. So the AFC has still 40 seconds to work with from their own 37-yard line. Gee, you wonder if Peyton will go up top. <laughs> He's got two timeouts remaining. 44 points scored in the first half. Of course, Chad Johnson caught the first ball from Steve McNair for a touchdown. Hasn't had the one reception since. New great protection for Tiffany Gonzalez. He gets out of bounds, the tackle by Corey Chavis, but he got out of bounds going backwards, so they'll have to spend a timeout to stop the clock. Let me tell you, I was talking to Archie Manning when we first got here about Peyton. And, you know, Peyton, at one time, he was doing camps, and the young kid came up, and he said, you know, how do I stop the you know, wall wiggling? He's just throwing a spiral. Peyton said, you know, I used to worry about that. He said, as long as you get there, it makes no difference. He said, I don't throw spirals. He said, I throw it hard. I get it there, and it doesn't make any difference. So quit worrying about it. Peyton Manning is writing his name into the record book at an incredible pace. Six straight years, he's had 25 or more touchdown passes. Brett Favre and Dan Marino had held the record at five. I'm and gonna, you're talking about the quarterbacks. I'm going to guess there'll be a seventh as we sit here next year and talk about the 2005 Pro Bowl. And he's had five straight years with over 4,000 yards passing. Nine out of 18, 190 yards in limited action in this one. He has hit eight of his last ten passes. Fakes the draw. Look out to Harrison. Let's go to Mort. Peyton's first trip to Hawaii was actually in 1980 when Archie Manning played in the first Pro Bowl ever here in Honolulu. And now Archie has returned to Hawaii for the first time since that game at the Pro Bowl as Peyton's guest. So it's kind of a it goes around, comes around, guys. Boy, did Archie play on some bad teams? Oh, terrible teams. <laughs> oh, I like it. Mort says Peyton's guest. It's his dad. It's more than a guest. <laughs> it's a pretty good legacy here. Peyton, Archie, and well, Eli playing at Mississippi. Watch Eli out. will be one of the very top pick. I'm telling you, watch out, Michael, for the guy on the right. Archie canceled Eli's um, uh, allowance. allowance. Yep. <laughs> Yanked it away. He did an appearance at the Super Bowl. He says, that's it. You're off the allowance, son. You're on your own. And Cooper was also out here this week. A kid with a great personality. The other brother in the family who was a terrific wide receiver when he played. Now, Cooper's a funny guy. You ever spent Isn't that he? time talking to Cooper? Oh. From the 43, Manning unloads this one. And Harrison couldn't turn around the second time. The ball thrown over his outside shoulder and out of bounds. That time, he finally had somebody in his face. I think looked like it might Leonard have Little, been I think. Leonard Little. You know, it, it just it just gets me every time I watch Marvin Harrison run. I don't know if it's me, but does he get faster? Probably, as he hear probably goes on, you, he gets but faster. Yeah. He, 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 this guy gets faster as the year goes on. He can't get much lighter. He's jump boots, 175 pounds as it is. Quick out to Harrison this time, covered by Dre Bly. Uh, Mike, you were talking about playing in the, in the Pro Bowl before. I had, the, I had Charlie Brown here, who I played with. And you get into positions when you're familiar with the receiver, and we see Marvin catching a lot of balls from Peyton now. You get into a game, and all of a sudden you start making stuff up, and you tell the other guys, all right, do this. And then at the last minute you say, Marvin, remember what we did like in 01? That little out route, go ahead and run that. The little subtle changes that go on through the Pro Bowl. They got eight seconds, and that's it. No timeouts. So this has got to go to the end zone. Running back. Cross him up. It won't be a quarterback draw. And Peyton is just going to throw it away as he was under pressure. And there is still time left on the clock. Well, here comes Vanderjack. Chris Jenkins almost got to it. Last couple plays, Peyton felt a little bit of heat. You know, the record that Vanderjack set this year, 37 out of 37, what made it more remarkable 
is that he didn't have a bunch of 19-yard field goals in there. He had a lot of kicks between 40 and 50 yards and game winners. Well, he had a miss also, but it was it was called back because of a penalty That's and right. had a second chance. So he had a little bit of luck going for him, which I think all records have to have, but you certainly can't take away <laughs> The he job he's done. Excuse me, he was talking to the sovereign on the sidelines for the NFC. He says, hey, come on out here. We're missing the guy. Come on out and block him. No good. And it's off to the right. Our score here at Aloha Stadium, the AFC 31, the NFC 13. Stay tuned for the Toyota Halftime Show. Live coverage from Aloha Stadium right after this commercial break. This halftime show was presented by the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-size. Welcome back to the Toyota Halftime Show with your host, Chris Berman. And welcome back, everybody, to the frozen tundra of Aloha Stadium. And if you needed a little offense to warm me up, man, you've had it here, certainly from the AFC in the first half of this Pro Bowl, the 25th here in Hawaii. If you tune in late, don't ever let it happen again. However, here we go. Steve McNair on the field for the first play. And what does he do? He's on his own 10-yard line. And, oh, we're going to little play action. And we're going to hit Chad Johnson from the Cincinnati Bengals. 90 yards, the second longest play from scrimmage in Pro Bowl history. Peyton Manning has thrown two touchdown passes. Ed Reed has blocked a punt. And it's 31-13 at the half AFC here for the NFC. Would be as Michael Irvin. And look, this is a game made for you. But bombs away, huh? I, I don't know about me, Boom. I never had the speed the AFC has on their sidelines. And obviously, they came into this game looking to explore that speed hurts. And it is hurting the NFC. They don't have the type of speed at cornerback. You got Chad Johnson, Marvin Harrison, and Doug, Derek Mason. And they are bombs away with the NFC squad. And how about, look, Steve McNair is hurting, so he's only going to play a series or two. Why not have a couple of the players be, be fly back? Right, right. And even the last few plays, that's 31-13 lead let's go try to get more points well so whoever said they don't play hard in the pro Bowl. 31 to 13 afc andy reed and the nfc said man we're gonna lose another one they're gonna be coming back so we'll see bring out your abacus we got more points to come we got a great halftime celebration of 25 years of aloha michael urban chris berman the gang's here enjoy we'll be back Jamal Lewis, league leading rusher, 2,066 yards. Dante Culpepper, Pro Bowl starting quarterback. Priest Holmes, most touchdowns in one season. It's 27. 27. Torrey Holt, league leading receiving yards. Dante Hall, return specialist with four TDs. No matter who wins tonight's MVP, one thing's for sure, they'll be wearing NFL equipment. NFL equipment, performance of power. Wear what the pros wear. This halftime show was presented by the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. Welcome back to Honolulu, everyone. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. So right now, let's go down to the field for a special halftime celebration featuring the ambassador of Aloha, Danny Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Kalakini, Amy Hanai Ali'i Gillum, and Willie Kay, it's been 25 years of Aloha! Hey, Aloha! Aloha kaku apau! Aloha! Aloha! Aole komo mai pukako! Aloha! Aloha, Aloha, Keakua. Huma kau kau. Hiri, 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 hiri,
welcome to my paradise In these islands we'll embrace you Surrounding you with your enchantment In this paradise of aloha You've come so far Just to be under the sun In this paradise of Aloha Aloha Hawaii! Where heaven waits for you on these islands by the sea. It's a paradise of the Lord. Welcome to place like it in America or in the world. We're glad you joined us for the Pro Bowl here. We'll be back. Welcome back to Honolulu, Hawaii, where the AFC scored a record 31 first-half points to lead the NFC 31 to 13. 
And Peyton Manning certainly showed why he was the co-MVP of the National Football League in the first half. He was terrific as usual. Well, he's the most valuable player right now. I mean, yeah. but you look, and I think I think the advantage is there is because they do have their system here. He does have Marvin and other people here. So it, it's, it's a lot easier for Peyton. I just really like what you've done with the hut. I think you've added a real personal touch to our booth up here with the little hut up here. It's hey, not Jake, a hut. This is my room. This, this, where I've been this is what I thought. But you know, it really—it's it, a fun game because you—you you see the individual excellence. You see a Marvin Harrison go up against a Champ Bailey. You see a Peyton Manning throw the football down the field. Back. And, and for Dante Culpepper, it's a little bit different because this is a system that he's not used to. So you see him try and adjust as the great athlete he is. The second half, I think, is where the money comes into play because it's 35000 apiece for the winning team, 17 5 for the losers. A lot of guys brought family, friends, cousins, whatever over here. It cost them a lot of money to make this trip, and they're going to want to win to get the winner's share. We have 12 players wired for this game. Here was the best of Peyton Manning in the first half. thing you hear is the oomphs. I mean, he's letting it fly. The one to Tony Gonzalez, I think, was the one that he really let it fly. With with Marvin Harrison, he knows basically exactly what Marvin's going to do and be able to do. And he comes back out and now fires. But I just hope he doesn't get another touchdown. Pick. Mike, Mike says the difference. Break your record. Break my record. Michael said the difference. You didn't, you didn't say only 17,500, did you? No, I didn't. Because these guys will never say only. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Are you kidding? They don't say only. You know, the thing about Peyton Manning that uh, has amazed me the last couple of years, not only has he gotten better, which you would expect from somebody who works as hard as he does, but he has gotten physically stronger. He has a much better arm than he did coming out of Tennessee. And I think the thing is, everybody says, where is he going to go? I mean, to me, there's no place else but, but uh, Indianapolis because he, he's invested five years up until this year in running that offense. Now, all of a sudden, he's got help, and they have a chance. They made it all the way to the AFC Championship game. You know, got to get some defense. You talked about the money, though, and having families come over. The Kansas City Chiefs, nine pro bowlers, chipped in and split the expenses to bring the equipment men over. A lot of people from the offices of the Kansas City Chiefs. Isn't that great? A lot of players. I mean, the tab was up over it's like 70000 and Willie Rolfe, who is the only one that didn't make it over because he stayed home to take care of himself and some family, was the one that sort of organized. It's really a classy act by the Chief guys. It sure was. We had a chance to talk to Carl Peterson the other night. Uh, Derek Mason on the return to the 12 for the AFC. These guys are returning. They're kind of looking around saying, you know, you can tackle me anytime you want. Should be Trent Green coming out for this quarter. And Trent Green finished second in the NFL this year, 4,039, 4,093 yards passing. His rating was fourth in the NFL, 92.6. And a lot of people very happy to see Trent Green here in his first bowl, Pro Bowl appearance because he's been in this league for 10 years. Probably could have been here a few years ago when Kurt Warner was the MVP of the league. Of course, he was the one that was supposed to coach the Ram, uh, quarterback, the Rams, exactly. in that started as a San Diego charge. Had a tremendous preseason. Oh, 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 takes the snap from center, drops it, makes it back up. Down the middle for Harrison, knocked away by Champ Bailey. Oh, one step under throw. Marvin had, Marvin had his sights on that one. I mean, he was running along, and that ball was coming right to him. And it, watch this move inside. Now, he, he's just looking back. See how his head stays still? That, that just amazes me. The great receivers do that. And then Champ Bailey just closes on it in a second to knock it away. I remember talking to Jerry Rice about that. I love studying receivers. What do you think? What do you think? You're really called bobblehead dolls? Some of them, the bad ones do have bobblehead dolls. <laughs> Jamal Lewis first through the hole this time. LeVar Arrington gets a free ride out to the 39-yard line. You know what's been, it, the surprising part of this whole thing is when they're running, all of the big runs have been up the middle. The draws, the quick handoffs, 
when you're going wide or try to get outside the tackle, the problem is there's too much speed down there. That's right. So you go right at the speed and don't let them react. You talked about it before. You're going to get the man-on-man -man blocking by the big guys up the middle. For the AFC, you have Kevin Wy anchoring in, in the middle, and Tom Haven, the center from the Denver Broncos. So, this time Richardson gets a rare carry and wishes he hadn't because Leroy Glover was waiting in the hole for him. Well, what happened is Will Shields is a guard that came down and forgot to block Leroy Glover. Leroy Glover got across the line before Shields could see him. And watch this. Here comes Shields. Look at this. Glover went all the way around, ducked underneath, and then made the tackle in, in the backfield. Had a chance to fly out with Leroy, his wife, Spring, and little Leroy. Play golf with him? I did not play <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the only one I didn't play golf Why don't you with. send him 20 bucks <laughs> But anyway. I did have a plane flight with this family, which I enjoyed. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this 20 would be a cheap out of you. Brent Green guns this one, and Todd, he has had a day so far he'd probably like to forget. He's been knocked around, and that one he couldn't hold. Trent Green had a brilliant year for that high-octane Kansas City offense. A career-high 4,039 yards, second in the league. Makes his first Pro Bowl, led the Chiefs to a 13-3 regular season record. Had a season-best 400 yards in Week 6 at Green Bay. Well, you know, I, Michael, Joe, I'm not taking anything away from Trent Green. But when you've got Priest Holmes, you got a guy that runs the ball as much as he does. I mean, it is a lot easier to pass the ball. Well, I guess... I don't necessarily agree with that ball. I just think you, know, you have to be able to throw the football effectively because sooner or later people are going to try and take away your running game. I think you throw the football in this league to score, I think you run to win football games, and that's the way Kansas City has approached it. Uh, certainly, you know, look at LaDainian Tomlinson, a great, great, great runner in San Diego, and they didn't have anybody to throw the football, right. and they really couldn't win football games. Todd, he finally had a chance to catch a ball without somebody right on his, right in his grill. Well, uh, yeah, but he slipped and fell down. <laughs> now everybody's in the shadows on the field, so everybody can probably see easily. First down, AFC already leading 31 to 13. Mike, back to Trent Green. You talk about a guy on a traveled road, got drafted by the Chargers. It's been a year or two there. Went up played with the BC Lions as the third string quarterback in the Canadian Football League. And got cut. Wound, wound up coming back to Washington. Threw 23 touchdowns and 11 interceptions in a year, but they were only 6 and 10, so they made the change there. Goes to the Rams, is supposed to be able to take the greatest show on turf someplace. Gets hurt and opens the door for Kurt Warner. And I think that's why so many people are happy for him for success. There's Todd Heath. The all-pro tight end from the Baltimore Ravens. Let's go to Susie. Well, Ray Lewis had six interceptions this year. That's almost unheard of for an inside linebacker. How are you trying to redefine the position? Well, I think simply by just doing a lot of things that uh, the linebackers are not used to knowing for doing. And uh, and that's one of the things. And it's just reading quarterbacks, going back, watching film. Susie, it's easy for me to make tackles. It's easy for me to do that. That's the easiest thing for me to do is go to the football. So I was just wanting to come in and prove just a little bit on my game. And every year you always have something to prove on. So I just improved on catching it this year. Coming into the season, you said the goal was to put fear in every running back even before they stepped on the field. You're out here with the best. Who do you respect the most? Yeah, I think I respect all these guys. First and foremost. You know, anytime that you have these type of guys in a Pro Bowl, you have to give them respect. You know, because, I mean, just the hard work that they put into it. So, you know, respect is always there for these guys right now. Your teammate just scored. Yeah, I saw it. Hey, that's another one. I love that guy so much, man. He's having a great year. It's just happy to see him come back off of the new He's doing good. We're going to tee this up. What do you think? Uh, and he's 240-some pounds running like that. That's scary, Susan. And I have to practice against him. You see what I'm talking about? Thanks, Ray. Yeah. You know the thing about Ray Lewis, so we do, we do the games and about all the study in the film. He said, I can tackle. All I have to do is get there. This guy studies so much, he knows exactly what the offenses are doing as soon as they can snap the ball. And he's there to make the play. And Ray Lewis is watching Jamal Lewis run. He says, that's scary. How do you think most guys feel with him <laughs> on the other side of the ball? Petrified. <laughs> AFC scores again. They're running it up on the NFC.
ESPN's coverage of the AFC and FC Pro Bowl, brought to you by The Neighborhood, built by MCI. Unlimited local and long distance for one low monthly price. 100 streams of satellite radio. Serious, it's on. Suzuki, maker of performance-driven motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. And Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. It was fun for us to watch Paul get in a little surfing while we were out here. That was after two lessons. These teachers are really good. No, that was after two cases of beer. <laughs> Not two lessons. 38-13 AFC. They have scored at least 38 points in the last four years out here. Azuma on the return. They can use a big one from this guy. Trying to get to the corner. Cuts back again. He's got room. Jerry Azuma across the 40, finally dragged down by Heinz Ward. We've got a timeout, 10.54 to go, third quarter from Honolulu. lessons pay off eventually a little local color here from Honolulu as we have been entertained uh, poolside every evening at our hotel the Iolani Hotel with a beautiful place Great that is place. players practice field next to it Mark Bulger the new quarterback he led the NFC in passing yards for the St. Louis Rams and drops the throw first down and complete intended for Holt let's go to Mort 16 seasons as a member of the famed Purple People Eaters of the Minnesota Vikings, a 20-year wait for the Hall of Fame. What a week it's been for you. Oh, it's been a great week. Carl Eller, by the way. Yes, Carl Eller, and uh, I'm in the Hall of Fame, and, uh, wow, it's been a great week. Everything's just gone wonderful. Did, you played in six Pro Bowls. Do you have a favorite Pro Bowl memory? Well, you know, the thing is, is that when we wanted to win, you met uh, guys on another team. I remember meeting Deacon Jones for the first time. We became friends, you know, that was kind of a neat deal for me. And they kept stats for sacks all the way back. How many would you have Deacon had had? Oh, I'd have probably had 160 or 70, probably. <laughs> Deacon says he's over 100, guys. 200. I think Deacon said he was over 300. <laughs> he got... He got so many different sacks before they kept uh, track of it as an official statistic and here are the Hall of Fame inductees this year Bob Brown great offensive lineman Carl Eller you just saw John Elway and Barry Sanders and Barry could not be here this week because his wife is due with uh, a baby congratulations hope all is well Barry. third and ten for the NFC and Bulger nearly intercepted by Ty Law that lock goes by the bench saying don't throw that over there <laughs> you know, I've been picking a Ray Lewis socket. Ray Lewis going over to give him a hard time. Said, Ty, come on. We only have 38. I would uh, get my running game moving if I were them. Ray Lewis played with a harness on. I believe he's still wearing it uh, on that right arm of his and right shoulder. We got Steve McNair playing this game with an ankle that's still sore. And Ray Lewis playing with a harness on. And just have to admire the guys that really want to be here. Sauerbrunn, beautiful kick to Mason. Just plucked it. Mason back to the seven. And will be taken down at the 11-yard line. Alex Bannister down on special teams for Seattle. He is the special teams player at 17 stops on teams this year. 38-13 AFC, Ray Lewis wired for sound. What did he have to say to Ty Law in that last play? Come here, let me talk to you. You can't call the interception, then don't catch it. Come on, Ty, you're killing me. You're killing me, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> he said they called it. If you're going to call an interception, you got to catch it. Trent Green and the AFC will start from its 12-yard line. And Green to throw. Gonzalez out across the 30. Let's go to Susie with Ty Law. Uh, everybody talks about Ray Lewis as the leader. What do you think of when he's in your face? Oh, man, it's all, it's all fun, man. He's the captain, right? And uh, I deserve to get screamed out on that one, man. But we out there having a lot of fun. We, we planned on uh, picking one up and going to the end zone and do a little celebration. 
and, and I called it and messed it up. <laughs> you had three interceptions in the championship game. What's the first exchange like when you see Peyton Manning here in Hawaii? Oh, I mean, we played against each other so much, so it's a mutual respect. Uh, it's all in competition, and we're trying to do what's best for our teams. But once we're down here, we're on the same team. So, I mean, none of that gets talked about. Maybe a little uh, stab here and there, but uh, it's, all, it's all in good competition. We know, given the salary cap, it's not a sentimental game anymore. All season long, there was talk about maybe you're being released. You go ahead and win the Super Bowl. What's your gut feeling? Uh, well, my gut feeling is I'll be a Patriot. I mean, uh, People don't realize that I'm still under contract. I have two years left, but we all know about the salary cap, and I have a high cap figure, but hopefully we can put our heads together and, um, you know, do something to keep me there because I, I would love to retire as a patron. I hope we see it. Thanks. Uh, thank you. You know, to, to me, that is the one shame of the salary cap is that guys often can't play their entire career in, in the city where they started. Law playing in his fourth Pro Bowl this year, his third straight, six picks during the regular season, and as Susie mentioned, three more in the AFC Championship game against the Colts and did it basically on one good leg all year. Portis dives out across the 40-yard line. Uh, you, I mean, you, you look at Chris McAllister in this game, you look at Ty Law, the size of these corners, they're all over 200 pounds, all of them can run, they're physically strong. Uh, he did a terrific job on Moussa Muhammad in the Super Bowl. Got on him one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, we saw the job he did in the AFC Championship game. He was an MVP here, I believe, in 1999. You know, it, it really is such a shame when a guy legitimately wants to stay somewhere. And the salary cap almost doesn't get the chance. KGB knocks the ball loose. And the NFC recovers. What a job by Kabir Viaja Miller. I mean, here's a guy who's been here a little over 20, uh, a little over 24 hours. Got in yesterday afternoon at 2 o'clock on the left end. You see him come around, number 94. Reuben Brown can't get out and block him. Strips the ball from Trent, Trent Green. He'll play in the game today and go home tomorrow. He was the player that came and replaced Simeon Rice. And the only thing I can say to Simeon Rice is with, why don't you respect the players that are here, respect the game. If you don't want to come, don't come. But don't put it on a player to have to go through what Kabir has had to go through to get here. And Andy Reid was far less than pleased that Simeon Rice didn't show up until late in the week. He was on vacation, presumably somewhere in Europe, and then missed a practice, missed a meeting, and they, the NFL find him and they sent him home. If you don't want to be here, that's your choice. But don't come over here and put a drag on everybody else. There are guys here that really respect and love this game and want to be here. And he talks about Simeon says, I want to be the best in the game. It starts with playing the games like this and at least showing up. And the officials have reversed their ruling. Trent Green came out of the pile with the football, and they gave it back to the AFC. How did he get it away from Kabir? I don't know. Kabir went to reach for the ball and knocked it into Green's hand. Kabir has jet lag. Trent Green fumbles. This one is picked up by Leonard Little. Well, there's no mystery about that one. Well, his first his first encounter at quarterback, Trent Green dropped the ball when he went back to throw. Then this one, he leaves the ball on the ground, and then uh, Kabib knocked the ball out of his hands. So that's three, actually three fumbles. A turnover by the AFC. Will it give the NFC new life? The AFC leads at 38-13. The last two plays, let's hear what Trent Green had to say. He was wired. I got, he never, he missed it. I got the ball. I got the ball. He never had it. We got it. Well, the ball usually is pretty good proof. And he came out with it on the first one, but not the second. Bulger with people in his face throws complete to Torrey Holt down to his head. Well, we saw what Peyton Manning did with Marvin Harrison as far as the comfort level between a quarterback and a receiver. Mark Bulger, the first pass he threw was high was to Torrey Holt. Now he comes back and manages to complete another one. I mean, you just find the guys that know you. Well, all Holt did was catch 117 passes for 1,696 yards. And he made some of the greatest catches throughout the course of the year. Down around his knees, up over his head, behind his back. Bulger straight back to throw after the punt fake to the corner. Oh, touchdown. Touchdown. So back-to-back -back strikes for the 
St. Louis Ram touchdown combination. Chris McAllister was on the outside. I'll tell you, this was a, this was just a heck of a move. He took Chris McAllister back to the inside and just broke at the outside. The pass had to be perfect, and it was. Talking to Chris McAllister, he's had about three weeks since the season, and he said, well, I was going to work out a little bit, but then I said, nah, I don't think so. And as a result of just having three weeks of the season sort of get to you a little bit, take a little time off. Torrey Holt now with four catches, 93 yards, and a touchdown. And Wilkins will try to the point after. And it's 38 to 20. You know, when you talk about Bulger, the only thing you really have to know about him as a starter, he is 18 and four. Well, he, try that one. Well, on. here's the other thing you have to know about him is he is probably going to be in the middle of a, embroiled in what will be a quarterback question in St. Louis. Will Kurt Warner be able to stay there and want to stay there? Knowing that Mark Bulger now has played in the Pro Bowl as Kurt had, as the same as the record you mentioned, Mike 18 and 4. Let's check in with Mort. With Tory Holt. Tory, what's that play in the Rams playbook? Bulger was throwing it. That's the two shake right there in the Rams playbook. Just a little quick slant. He pumps and I work back out to the corner of the end zone. He was playing inside leverage, so I caught him there with the slant. He was able to get back outside. This game was getting away from you guys a little bit. You're back in it. Uh, do you? The answer everybody, the question everybody fan wants to know is, do you really care? Yeah, we care. I mean, we, you know, guys here, we, we're here to compete. We got a great deal of pride. So we want to come over and, and compete and give these fans what they want. They want to see a good game. So we're not just going to lay down and, and let the AFC walk away with a real nice like that. We want to keep competing and keep trying to get back in this game and win it. Plus about 20 extra grand for the winners, of right, course. Right, right. Well, you know one thing, Mike, that, and, and Joey, you played here in, think about an all-star game. These guys know it. They start walking around out here. Somebody's going to label them, and you're going to get hurt. So you have to, I mean, you really have to go at it. Now, I saw a couple of times on kickoff returns where a guy had a shot at another guy. and kind of, you know, he blocked him, but he didn't take him out like he could have. You know, really, from a special team standpoint, the way that the kicks are covered in an all-star game isn't really a bad idea to do it during the season. Right. You know, you set up five or six different waves instead of having everybody run down full speed. You sort of take your time a little bit. There's nowhere for the kick returner to go. And you know what we haven't had today? An illegal block in the back. That, that's <laughs> the other thing. That's right. Nobody's moving fast enough. <laughs> but I think we should have more starters on the kickoff. Too. I think there's plenty of them out there right now, Paul. <laughs> Looks like Andy Reid said, we didn't get many volunteers. There's ball that ball blows off the tee again. Nine mile an hour wind blowing it away. You have a chance to vote online for the Pro Bowl player of the game. Log on to ESPN.com or NFL.com. You can cast your vote there. Online results will contribute to the overall tabulation of today's most valuable player. Peyton Manning was sort of walking away with it. Now all of a sudden, Tory Holtz jumped up. I mean, this is the time of the game when you can become an MVP. And you may have to wait a little bit. Derek Mason is back in as we injured Dante Hall. Across the 20. And cut down as he reached the 32. Mike said, you said there were no, no blocks in the back. Spotter Mark said, yeah. No blocks, blocks in the front? In the front. <laughs> <laughs> not too many blocks in the front either. LeVar Arrington, you know, when you see this guy, and you talk to him, he's always got a smile on his face. You talk about a guy that loves his football game. He signed a huge contract. He actually signed it, what was it the day before we did a game right. in Washington. End of the season. And I'm going to tell you what, this guy is a player. And he wants to see some, he wanted to have some say-so in getting the defensive guys in there. Well, he's, I tell you, he's not going to have a whole lot of say-so with Greg Williams as the new defensive coordinator. But when you take a look at the way Takeo Spikes has flourished and finally become a Pro Bowler up right. in Buffalo when Greg Williams was the head coach, I think LeVar Arrington's future as a Washington Redskin and being very productive has to be very bright. Well... We just talked about LeVar Arrington and his speed, his quickness, and getting to the outside. He's going to be here. Watch. He looks from the inside. Nothing's there. Now he's trying to be blocked. So he goes back to the outside. How's that? And he is so excited that Joe Gibbs is the new Redskins coach. He should be. Coach Gibbs is a heck of a coach. Green short set. Loose ball. Picked up by Jerry. To the 10, Trent Green takes him out of bounds. Aaron just threw him a heck of a block, and it's a 34-yard fumble return. What a job they did, carrying the ball away. 
Garrett Mason's almost going to the ground, and the ball gets ripped away. All right, we're talking about LeBron. You know, LeBron Arrington, here he is, I saw it again. Take a look at this guy. I said he's all over the field. All we have to do is just mention the guy's name and near to the things that happen. He knocks the ball loose. But I'll tell you the funny part about it. Down in front, when Azuma got, got the ball, down in front, they were trying to figure out how to block Jonathan Ogden. Now, where do you hit a guy that's 6'12", 700 pounds? You don't. You can't really pick a spot. <laughs> Hit all over. I think Dre Bly might have pulled it out, and LeVar put the little finishing touches on that one. The AFC has fumbled the ball three times in its last four plays. Sean Alexander is in at running back on first and goal, and Alexander will get the carry to the four. Zach Thomas made the stop. Check in with Chris Mortensen. With LeVar and LeVar, a big hit. Uh, you guys are in the game. Uh, try to make it something. Try to make something out of it. Get a view of something to watch. It, 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 did you notice that there have been a, an unusual amount of big hits in this game? Uh, guys are playing. I don't know who thought that we was going to uh, take this as a vacation, but guys are out here playing. All right, guys, you heard it. Three straight times in the Pro Bowl for LeVar Aaron. You ever see him without a smile on his face? Nope. <laughs> Again, this time to about the three. It will be third and goal. Zach Thomas again. Oh, I think on they have attack. to. I think they're going to have to go two down territory, Paul. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> this guy just. What are you, I think we're sleeping on that grass wall there a little while ago. Andy Reid, talking to Andy earlier, it's funny. You know, he's coached here for the last two years, lost both of them. And, you know, he's thinking we've got to win a we've got to win a Pro Bowl before maybe we can get to the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, you really made Andy Reid feel good before they had a timeshare here. Two tight ends, Alexander. He's got his culture. Little roll throws. Keenan McCardell, touchdown. His first catch of the day. McCardell, a 12-year veteran in his second career Pro Bowl. Always run great routes. Always had great hands. And there's another guy you never see him without a smile on his face. 1996 with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was a pro bowler. Now he just slides on into the end zone. And Joe, that's not an easy throw either, although it looks I, easy. I guy's so wide open. I think it's the toughest throw. When you have a guy wide open and you're moving, the tendency is to just short on it. And that time, Mark just put it out there nice and smooth. Wilkins knocks it through, and all at once, the NFC is right back in this game. 38-27 AFC, LeVar Arrington wired, making plays and having a ball. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, we're going to get it, we're going to get it. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just explodes into people, doesn't he? So fast. I, I thought, I, I've always believed it. he could be an incredible middle linebacker. I picture him like a Ray Lewis with his closing speed, his athletic ability, his ball skills. I'd be amazed at what he could do for the middle. The AFC has suddenly developed fumbleitis. Mason bobbled that one. Back to the 20, 30, and out at the 32. One thing you predicted here, Joe, was trouble with the quarterback center exchange. Yeah, I mean, that's the hardest thing because quarterbacks get so comfortable that you don't even think about it with your own guys. But then you come to the Pro Bowl and you, you have a very limited period of time. You only get maybe 20 snaps through the course of uh, you know, each day for about three days, and that's it. And with Kevin Mawai and Tom Nalen, with the Denver Broncos and the Jets respectively, it's something that Trent Green has to work on, especially when a center steps one way or the other big. Now Kevin Mawai is back in at the center position for the ASC. <laughs> game like this and you don't you, you're not having those exchanges that you had before 
that you would kind of eliminate the plays, you know, that, where the center is pulling. Because if you, if that seems to be where the problems were arising when the center is pulling and, and they don't stay with the center long enough. That's where the, that's where you see the fumbles occur. That exchange wasn't very clean either by Trent Green. Even when the center moves forward, it's a problem, Paul, because the center's not thinking about it. He's used to having his guy there too, so all he's doing is snapping the ball. It's the quarterback that's got to make the adjustment. Green straight back to throw over the middle. Taken by Heath. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike, the Colts hadn't sent a defensive player to the Pro Bowl in 15 years, but defensive end Dwight Freedy makes his first appearance. What does that signify to you? Well, it means a lot. I mean, we had a lot of good players come out of Indianapolis. Unfortunately, we hadn't had that, that one player here. And I'm just out here trying to represent the Colts in Indianapolis. You know, we always hear how the intensity level of this game starts to pick up. It seems like the NFC is trying to get back into it. What do you guys have to do here? I see that. I see that. And that was, you know, an 11-point game now. And we got to pick it up now. It looks like they're making more big plays out there, so, you know, I got to make something happen. Get ready to go. Thanks. How about that? Kabir's got a chance. We talk about MVPs. I mean, Kabir Biagamilla is really the guy that has ignited and turned the NFC into a, okay, possible threat. They're only down by 11 now, but he's the guy that's making the play. He goes right by Jonathan Ogden. Jonathan Ogden just tries to push him away, and, and Kabir, I mean, he just overpowered him. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, let's oh, speak. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Oh, oh. Let's see. Okay. Well, you gotta let me, you know, somebody says, you gotta let me finish before you put your lips in there. <laughs> and Green fumbles the snap from center. Now, that time we saw Kevin Mawai try and pull to the right. Oh, excuse me, out to his left. When Kevin moves to his left, it's very critical that as a quarterback, you have to follow this, you have to follow with your hands the center's rear end. Watch him go to the left hard. He tries to make the snap. Now he goes left, and Trent Green is just fighting. I, I want to tell you, when you start fighting the snap from center, the only thing on Trent Green's mind right now, it's not plays, it's not throwing the football, it's please just let me get the snap. And Trent Green is on the verge of tying the throw ball record. He doesn't want to throw a bucket. And Green on third and very long. will throw it very long. And Champ Bailey is back there to knock it away from Hines Ward. Well, Hines Ward, you know, you, you, this is one of those plays where the offensive guy now becomes the defensive guy. He becomes the corner. Hines Ward became the corner because, I'm telling you right now, Champ Bailey was in this pattern. Look at Champ Bailey. This is his ball. And Hines Ward goes up and knocks the ball, knocks the Champ Bailey down. If he doesn't do that, that look at this. It looks like Champ's in the, in the pattern. Now Craig Hendrick will come in to punt. He had to do double duty for a period this year because Joe Nedney was hurt in that opening game. And Keenan McCardell will go back. And Tennessee brings in Gary, Gary Anderson. Gary Anderson. 87 years old, Gary Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> and not only did Nedney average 43-9 as a putter, he made four or five field goals. I mean, uh, he gets off a gorgeous kick here. McCardell all the way back to the 11. Reverse the Lamar is home. Coles keeps his feet, makes it up to the 24. 13 yard return. Let's go to Mort. Amazing development here, Kabir Baja Biamila. Where were you and what has the last 48, 48 hours been like for you? Well, I was in Green Bay and uh, I got called Friday that uh, they want me to play in the Pro Bowl. So, you know, I told my wife, I said, can I get 10 minutes to think about it? So me and my wife prayed about it and then called my dad and everything. I said, just go. I mean, this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance thing. So it's truly by Jesus' mercy that I'm up here right now. I was an alternate. I didn't have the greatest year like I usually do. And the fact that I'm even at the Pro Bowl, got two sacks today, is truly awesome. It's, have you checked your contract to see if you have any Pro Bowl incentives? You know something? I don't know, but uh, when I get home, I'll call my agent. I'll check it myself. <laughs> but that's what he gets paid to do, so he, he'll let me know if I do. He's wrong. I thought the NFL, he's got a commitment. He's got to go home tomorrow, but the NFL's promised an all-expenses-paid pay, vacation to Hawaii sometime. Hey, Mort, let's see. I'm living in Green Bay. It's four below. The wind's about 30 miles an hour. The phone rings. It's like to come to Honolulu for the weekend. Yeah, but how long do you have to think about that? But if you ask your wife, you say, do I have to go down? But it's a day. You're here right. for a day, and then turn around and go back. Torrey Holt, by the way, couldn't handle that last pass. It's second and ten in the NFC. There are only two touchdowns behind. 
Mark Bulger wired, having a great time in the fourth quarter. T, run a two shake. <laughs> Forget that Colorado two shake. That's a gimme there. Hey, bye bye to that Z step. One of the most unassuming young men you'll ever meet. He's only started 22 football games. Uh, 118. You know, so, I mean, I think he's made his case in St. Louis that he is the guy. Holt makes this catch up to the 37-yard line in front of Ty Law. Torrey Holt over 100 yards receiving now. Yeah, but, you know, when you see this catch that he makes, well, look at his hands. Just watch how soft this is. Look at his hands. Think. He catches his out away from his body in his hands. That's easy. You know, the long-term contract he got seemed to really calm down his demeanor. He was one of those guys woofing all the time and trying to make the statement. And I think the fact that that validated his presence in the NFL. He now has made a statement with his performance. Absolutely. Bulger, another quick set. This one from Bernie's Coles and pushed out of bounds by Ty Law. You talk so Bulger came in and missed a couple. He's did everything else. But you talk about a couple of players. Lavernius Coles, what a great move that was for the Redskins to get him. I watch him practice. I live in the area. Great work ethic. Never lets a ball hit the ground. And I really think that when Lavernius Coles left the Jets, of all the guys that they lost, he had the greatest ever in two ways. It forced Santana Moss to really step up, have a great year, but I think it also forced the Jets a little bit in the production that they got out of Lavernius a year before. Coles was the first Redskin wide receiver to come to Hawaii since Gary Clark. Walter throwing a deep one, incomplete out of bounds. Ty Law in the, on the coverage. Probably the uh, biggest news that we had late in the season outside the Super Bowl win uh, for the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick with a, with a brilliant year was the return of Joe Gibbs to pro football. There are still people in Washington who don't believe it happened. They were just absolutely stunned. Well, I think it's going to be a nine-month honeymoon. I really believe that every Washington Redskins fan is sitting there saying, hey, this is the greatest thing that can happen. Joe's still going to have to go out and coach. He has been away from the game for 12 years. He's brought his entire offensive staff back. Don Bro, Joe Bugle, Rennie Simmons, uh, Jack Burns, all the guys that were with him when he made that run. The man coached 11 years, went to four world championships, and he did it two years consecutively after his first head coaching job. So he can turn it around in a hurry. And I think the Redskins, I think Patrick Ramsey has a chance to be a pro bowler. I do too. And he's got himself a heck of a football player and a pretty solid football team to start with. Well, I asked Andy Reid about it too, and I said, do you think maybe being out for 12 years, it, it kind of passed him by a little bit. Could that have happened? He said, absolutely not. He'll just pick up where he was before. I mean, there's, there's some things he's going to have to get used to, but Joe Gibbs is no dummy. Southam, great kick. Derek Mason backed up inside the five. Got to the outside, and Arrington forced him out of bounds. Let's get down to Chris Mortensen on the sideline. Mort, this will follow up a little bit on Mark Brunel of the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Brunel, in fact, is scheduled to meet with Joe Gibbs on Monday to discuss this possible trade. This trade can't be made till March 4th. That's when the uh, new NFL calendar year starts, but it's real. There might be a second-round pick involved. The Chargers, Cowboys, and Dolphins also want to get in this game. And, Chris, I was going to say, I, I, ever since Mark Brunel... Uh, ever since it became apparent he wasn't going to be in Jacksonville anymore. I thought the Cowboys were a perfect fit. Well, a lot of people thought different people were a perfect fit. The question is with Bill Parcells, what does Bill want to do with his quarterback position? Is it going to be Chris do a pretty good job? I, mean, it, it, I think there's a decision to be made. I think there's a decision to be made out in San Diego with Drew Brees. He's been given some opportunity to play, but it seems like every other week, Doug Flutie winds right. up playing. And the word is they will not take Eli Manning, the San Diego Chargers, with the uh, first pick in the draft. Don't you believe the word at this time? In February, the word has nothing to do with happens in April. I mean, I'm not saying he will or won't, but I think they certainly have to give consideration to it. That's the end of the third quarter here in Honolulu. The score, the AFC 38, the NFC 27.
in the wine. Make me happy. Make me happy. Make me feel fine. Make me feel fine. Tiny bubbles. Tiny bubbles. Make me warm up. A lot of lot of The feeling that I'm gonna love you till the end of time. Terry Tate and Don Hall, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for him. And we want to thank <laughs> Terry Tate for everything he's done out here at the Pro Bowl this week. What do you week. want to hear for him? <laughs> Trent Green on the flea flicker to Johnson down to the 45-yard line. I just, you know, Terry Tate, we, we've watched this guy film some of the stuff, and I just want to, you know, I just hope everybody signed away. There won't be any losses. Because I'm going to tell you something, folks. When you saw those things, those clips, he he really whacked some people. Yes, he did. There's a guy that was a car attendant. And he is now a waiter. Because he knocked him into that room and the guy can't get out. AFC on top. They have moved into <laughs> NFC territory at the 34 yard line. Clinton yeah. Portis, the running back, lowers his head and yeah. one, maybe. You know, to be a running back in, in a Pro Bowl, all of these wide receivers and all of these quarterbacks that have gotten such huge numbers. I mean, you get when you're you're invited to Pro Bowl as a running back, you're thinking, well, it's gonna be a short day. Well, you know, there's it, not a whole lot I can do. It is, but the other part of it, if you watch this game, I think which is which is a lot of fun. These guys are used to making moves at the line of scrimmage to avoid linebackers blitzing. They're hesitating. I mean, they get the ball and there's this giant hole and they don't know what to do with it. Green to Johnson to snap it up. Arrington picked it up. What is going on with the AFC? And he fumbled. Holy cow, they just can't hold on to the football. Now the there's about, a flag down. Well, the thing about it is, did LeBar Arrington have control of the ball before he fumbled the ball out of bounds? Okay. Chad Johnson was the receiver. What that is, is that's an unsportsmanlike signal. All right, here it comes. Here, here is the catch. All right, uh, he's running with, he's, run, he's putting oh, the he's ball, putting right the ball away. All right, now the ball gets knocked out by Bly. LeVar Arrington picks it up. Now, hey, he has control of the football. The penalty has to do with an alignment by one of the defensive linemen. And so what's going to happen, it's an unsportsmanlike penalty against the NFC, and it will result in the AFC keeping the ball and getting a first down. Well, that's a huge break, and uh, they mentioned 93, which would be uh, Mike Rucker. And what you can do as a defensive lineman is line up in gaps. You have to line up across from the guy in front of you, uh, and, defensive tackle and offensive guard. And the defensive lineman cannot crisscross in a pass rush initially at the line of scrimmage. These are all subtle rules that apply only to the uh, Pro Bowl. Well, that's what we were talking about at the beginning, where you have, it, it's just one-on-one -on -one play. So a huge break for the AFC. They keep the ball. And Trey Green goes right back to work and throws this behind Marvin Harris. I'll tell you one other thing you're not calling. And that's holding. <laughs> Brad Hopkins just threw Rucker on the ground. I mean, no one. Well, he didn't her, hold him. He threw him. Is there a difference? Step over toe hold. <laughs> take, take a look on, on the left-hand side of the screen. Or right, right here. Look on the bottom. You think this is a takedown? Oh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> That's a takedown. It's a piggyback takedown. <laughs> yeah, but we got the new, we have a new name now. The piggyback takedown. Well, you know what would be nice if you think you've ever been in this game? Hey. These guys do a terrific job. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oops. Sorry, we got a free run. <laughs> Will Shields looking at him go, wait a second. What's happening here? Look at Corey. Corey thinks it's funny. I don't think Will. I don't think Will Shields sees the humor in it. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's smiling. He's smiling. Watch you want to see 68 disappear? Watch this. Pink. And then Corey helps him back up. <laughs> Will Shields. 
11 years with the Kansas City Chiefs. He and Tony Richardson have the longest tenure with that ball club. And he has the longest consecutive streak in the Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Portis. Mm -hmm. Dives for the goal line. The official was cut down. And now they signal touchdown. Point and Portis now will check on the official. I tell you, the guy who makes a play and seals this whole thing off is the center, Tom Naylor. He gets out to the outside and allows Clinton Portis to get out there. Watch on your left-hand side. Look at 66. He screams. He blocks. The hole is there. And that's for Arrington. Well, if you've got Kabir Biagia coming up the field, may as well throw the screen on top of him. Yep. There's no replay. When the, you, you talk about the Pro Bowl, and he doesn't step out of bounds. Does a terrific job of getting in, hitting the pylon. My most valuable player is the uh, entire AFC squad coaching staff wearing those red shirts. Why? Because they are about ten days to get done. <laughs> Went in quarters for the touchdown. They, they continue to attend to the official. And we're still trying to identify who it is. We've already lost one official today, and that's uh, Aaron Pointer, who actually is retiring after this game and had to leave at halftime because he wasn't feeling well. have a number chart up here for the officials. Ron Spittler, we are told, is the man who, uh, field judge, field judge who had his legs cut out from under him. And glad to see he's able to get up and run back on the field. And Jeff to the point after knocks it through. So the big break on that series was the illegal alignment that cost him possession of the ball after the fumble. The results have been added up. It's time to reveal what play you, the fans, have chosen online for the NFC to run. Let's get on the board with NFC Offensive Coordinator Brad Childress. Not only with Brad Childress, but with honorary captain Don Shula, great Hall of Famer. Brad, the fans have spoken. You explain the play and tell us what's going to happen here. Has 67 solid U Seattle. And we'll try to hit LG Crumpler over here in a three deep seam. Stick a back underneath him. Coach, outside. what do you think? Receiver has to clean it out so that it's open for the uh, tight end to get to the outside on a bow out. You can't get any better analyst than that. About 18, 20 yards. Yeah, we got to yeah. have it. Great. Right. All right, guys. All right, thanks, Chris. Coach Shula has gotten a big kick out of being here this week and around the game. And, yeah. you know, he just, he really just, the man absolutely loves the game of football. I mean, he looks at these young guys. Oh, here we are, the Indianapolis Colts kickoff. <laughs> there it is. Chad Johnson leading the way. There it goes. Oh, no. A little twist. Look at Zach Thomas. And the crowd loves it. There they go. There it is. <laughs> oh, you got to like that. Oh, it's, it's, it's the Indianapolis Colts kickoff team. Good move, Zach. Oh. Well, sort of. returned by the man who led the NFL in kick return average. And that's the third tackle that Hines Ward has made on the kickoff. Well, th this is speed. He just gets his ball. He sees the sideline. He gets a one block right there. But look at the rest of it. It's just straight up the field. Now, there's a guy who didn't start returning kickoffs until the fifth game of the season this year, had only returned like one other in college. All right, now we're going to see this pass to Crumpler. Is it coming now? All right, here it comes. And LG Crumpler uh, is a, a tight end on the left-hand side. And you're going to see Torrey Holt down here on the bottom of the screen run a go. And Alger somehow gets a little from pressure, throws to Crumpler. Crumpler, it's a <laughs> the fan has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> it. 
<laughs> we may have started something. I can see the fans in Philadelphia now. Algie Crump, one of the first Falcons tight ends since Junior Miller in 1981, gets the touchdown grab. Wasn't this beautiful? <laughs> Crump was getting tied up at the line of scrimmage, but then he just breaks to the outside. Now, you can't, they're trying to knock the ball away, and that, not that, well, that big guy you don't. Jerome Woods trying to knock the ball out, couldn't do it. And Bulger has thrown his third touchdown pass. That ties Joe Theismann and Phil Sims. He has nearly a full quarter left to break that record. ESPN's coverage of the AFC NFC Pro Bowl brought to you by the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. FedEx, you can always rely on the ultimate in reliable shipping. Relax, it's FedEx. And Fidelity Investments. Stop by your local Fidelity Investor Center today. Back in beautiful Hawaii for the AFC NFC Pro Bowl. And we have had a point explosion in this game it's 45 34. they want another play sent down <laughs> that's right <laughs> those were the fans in philadelphia calling we may have started something derrick mason to the goal line gets to the outside taking down at the 23. mark bulger one of the quarterbacks wired let's listen in on the last touchdown you seattle i want it I like this offense. Keep it up. Keep it up. I like this offense. 12 passes, three touchdowns. Mike I, like, I like this offense. Mike Marks making a note. <laughs> he likes this offense. We'll throw a few of these things in. Did a pretty good job in the one he runs in St. Louis yes, as well. Yes, he did. Threw for over 3,800 yards this year. Peyton Manning is back in for the AFC as they are being threatened at this point. Gonzalez. Gonzalez taken out of bounds by Oakley. Let's go to Susan. Clinton Portis is making his Pro Bowl debut. As you're diving toward the end zone, how much are you thinking about what the winners are taking home from this? Well, I'm thinking a lot about it. You know, I think I need that. I brought uh, enough people out here, so, you know, hopefully that'll put my money back. You know, I had like 15 people come out for the game. So, uh, in between playing tickets, hotel rooms, and uh, meals, I think I need that 35. This week, you alluded to a little trouble in paradise. Anytime a player who's under contract starts to talk contract, there's a certain perception. What can you clear up about that? Well, this is a rough situation. You know, uh, I, I think it was a misconception. You know, I didn't bring my contract up. It just happened to come out. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm under contract and I'm not getting paid what I'm worth. But, you know, I can't do nothing about it because I am under contract. So. Uh, if they don't choose to take care of me, that's them. You know, I got to uh, play out my contract. I got two years here. Thanks, Quentin. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Dexter Copley has just recovered a fumble, the third that the AFC has lost in this game. And now it's Peyton Manning is the guy. He didn't drop one in the first half. Well, different yet here again. You got Tom Nalen this time. We saw Trent Green miss one with Kevin Mawai. Now you get another one with Tom Nalen. I mean, it's just, it's so different for both the quarterback and the center. It's the one thing that really is so difficult to practice. Bulger, Bubba Franks had it and couldn't hold it. Ed Reed on the coverage. Well, I'll tell you what, you, you talk about staying with the coverage, Ed Reed. Here's Bubba, the ball is in the, Bubba Franks, that ball is in the air. Watch Ed Reed, he just brings him down. He stays with him. If he kind of, if he lets him go and doesn't get his hand in there, Bubba has a chance of catching that ball. Ed Reed is such an impressive young man to spend time with. I mean, you talked about the preparation, Michael, before, that right. the time he spends with Ray Lewis. Young guy only in his second year, his first pro bowl. That was the same play that they ran to Alex Crumble for the touchdown, only this one went to Price. And now Mon Green inside the 20 on the delay. Casey Hampton with another tackle. Now the NFC is within, actually, as a, as a combined score, they're within four points of 
of tying or breaking, or I guess breaking the record here in the Pro Bowl for most points scored. It's a record-breaking performance by these guys. If Andy Reid wouldn't mind winning one of these. Third and six. Of course, a field goal would put them within the eight. Play by Torrey Hill. Paul, you mentioned before, you talked about guys on the offense having to become defensive backs. That time, Torrey Holt had to get his hand up and knock it away. And and Jeff Wilkins will come yeah. in for a field goal try. He's the two of three today. Let the adventure continue for the kicking game of the NFC. Now, keep an eye on the rush. See if it changes here in the fourth quarter. Yeah. In 1990, the NFL began a Teacher of the Year program to honor classroom teachers who were influential in the early academic development of NFL players. This year's Teacher of the Year, Julianne Bush from Mark Twain Elementary School in Iowa City, Iowa. She was nominated for the award by her former student, Tim Dwight, of the San Diego Chargers. And our congratulations to her. One other congratulation goes out to uh, George Kamau, Kiyoki Kamau's dad. Kiyoki was a trainer with the Redskins. His father was honored with the Val Pinchback Meritorious Award for 25 years of service at the Pro Bowl. The year great. for everyone. George, great guy. AFC takes over. They want to reverse to Hines. Chavis takes him out of bounds. Let's go to Morton. I am with the new Hall of Fame inductee, Bob Brown, the great tackle, played with three different teams, the Eagles, the Rams, the Raiders, and went to the Pro Bowl with all three teams. Bob, how, how big a thrill has this been for you? This is absolutely the greatest thrill of my life. Uh, I'm excited, I'm thrilled, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't say enough about what this experience is. Were you starting to give up hope as the, as the years passed by on this one? Well, I'm 26 years after the fact, so I was starting to wonder, but they say good things come to those who wait, and I've been waiting a long time. Good things come to a good man. Back to you guys. All here, right, here. thanks. Well, and, and congratulations to all four of those guys. It's a shame they didn't bump. He's having a baby. Barry Sanders is not here. But I'll tell you what, you know, uh, that, you, all the Super Bowl rings you see, and then when you see a guy walking around with the Hall of Fame ring, it's not gaudy. The boy, you know what it is. And you know what an exclusive club it is when Bob Brown and Carl Eller have to wait that long to get in. First down, AFC, that's own 38. Manning with plenty of time. And just throws this one away. Oh, and roughing the pass. And he got hit. I think that's Corey Simon. Looks like... Uh, He's taken on Will Shields, and this time I think he got to Peyton. And Corey, very slow to get up. Personal foul, number 90 to the defense. 15-yard penalty automatic, first down. And that's the first one of those we've had. Yeah, well, Corey got the worst of it well, somehow. Yeah, it's got to be blamed when you do it, though. Here's Manning, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. That Corey's had his first. Oh, he cut his legs out. Oh, you know something? He knew it right away. I, I don't know whether he felt. I don't believe that he did that on purpose. I don't either. I really don't. I, I just think he might have been tripping and went down because these guys have way too much respect for one another. I think when he went to the ground, you could almost see him cover his face like, oh, my gosh, what did I do? Or what happened? Uh, you know, you, you, you really, uh, there is there is a guy on this field that, that, that I've even never heard of that's ever played in this game that would, would do something. No, they're like not going to hit a quarterback no. low. And Corey Simons, I, I, just, I had to feel, he's same as you did, Joe, he's going down. He also he, got the worst of it. Led his team in tax with, ta sacks with seven and a half this year. All right, here it is from high. Now, Corey Simons, here he comes in here. Oh, man, wait a minute. He takes a shot right at his knees, though. I don't so know. He wasn't tripping. 
I don't know. Well, he had been down earlier on the play and got up. Perhaps he was off balance. You'd have to only assume that. There's a guy who's not been off balance. Marvin Harrison, he's been nothing but on balance all day. But the official right foot threw that play. Marvin Harrison on the reverse, and now he's going to throw. Under throwing Champ Bailey with the interception. I'll tell you what, this, 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 this play had no no from the beginning. When Marvin Harrison catches the ball on the reverse, he has to run inside the defensive end, not out around where you would like to go. But Champ Bailey, you know, here's a guy that has to be considered as one of the uh, most valuable players in the game. Take a look at Champ Bailey. He isn't fooled by Heinz Ward or anything else. And he just makes a, a, a wonderful play on this ball. He's had two other chances for interceptions, and this one he goes up to get. I agree. You know, Paul, I agree with you. I mean, you can look at all the offensive stats, but he's the guy that sort of kept the NFC around making big plays. The AFC has given the ball away four times in this half, three fumbles, and now that interception. And they were in excellent field position, you know, one other fumble nullified by right. a penalty, so really would have been five. So Bulger has to start from his own 11, quickly out of the Tory hole. But Callister pushes him out of bounds after a game of nearly 10 yards. You, gotta think, what, you know what you can really think about? Now, there are, uh, how many guys? There's 86 of them. Right. What, 80 of them? Joe had played in three weeks. Not about that, yeah. And they've been on this field. They've been out here since what? Two o'clock this afternoon. It's about uh, four hours. In, in, in the, and they're getting the, a little tired. In the beautiful Hawaiian sun, you're right. Plus, the other thing is the corners cannot press outside. I mean, Mark Bolger could just throw this pass all day long to Tory Hall. And a huge game for Hall so far since they're going to and there goes Sean Alexander rumbling out to the 34. Let's check in with Susie. Uh, Chiefs right guard Will Shields has been to nine consecutive Pro Bowls, more than anybody else here. What's better, number one or number nine? They're all just as good, but, you know, when you're getting older, it gets a little tougher, and, you know, to get ready for the game and that kind of thing, so you do your best, but it's a good feeling to be, you know, just honored to be in the ranks of being a Pro Bowl player. Nine Chiefs selected, the most for any team, and you guys all chipped in to bring 50 staff. How does that all come about? Well, that sort of started with Priest a couple of years ago. He wanted to bring the whole team, and so it's been an ongoing thing where we just sort of bring as many people as we can. And so this year ended up being 50 people that took us up on it. Good job. Thanks. I'll tell you what, when and he's talking about getting older, he looks like he's about 21 years old. I'm going to tell you something else about this young man. He was also the Walter Payton NFL Player of the Year yes, award recipient this year. I mean, uh, Troy, Troy Vincent last year received the same award. First of all, the award speaks for itself when it's named after such a man as Walter Payton. I've been lucky enough to have been a recipient of the Man of the Year awards as well. And it recognizes his service to the community outside of the game of football. And those are the things you need to know about the people that play for Lamar Hunt and the Kansas City Chiefs. And every it's, one of them class guys. It doesn't just mean that he writes a couple of checks either. He's getting the ball down. Lavernius Cole is getting some block after making the catch down to the 24. And Mark Bulger with a sensational last third of the game and has his team on the move again. Dan Snyder, owner of the Redskins, have to be sitting home saying, that Champ Bailey guy, you know, he's a free agent, oh, yep. by the way. And look at Lavernius Coles make the play. I tell you, Bulger is putting this ball right on target. He really has not thrown more than one or two bad passes. The thing is, is I mean, Pro Bowl balloting sometimes is pretty easy. In this game, you've got five or six guys. Mark Bulger, uh, Torrey Holt, we've got Chief Daly. Hey, man, you can't forget about what he did in the first half of the game. Sean Alexander in the first quarter. Bulger again, another strike for Coles, taken out of bounds by Ty Law. Seize the opportunity. I think that, that's got to be Mark Bulger's new nickname. He did it He did it with the Rams when he had a chance to play, and now here he is coming in, bringing the, the NFC. Hopefully back within striking distance. Plenty of time left. A little over seven minutes in this quarter. And when they get, if they get the touchdown, they're going to have to go for two. 
He led the league this year with 59 completions of 20 or more yards. That's a huge number. 10 out of 18 in this game, 148 yards, three touchdowns. Sean Alexander dancing, trying to find the seam, gets down to the 11. Probably 30 of them to Torrey Holt. Exactly. Well, you know, we, we've been talking all week long, and this is my first Pro Bowl to do, in, you know, asking the guys, and we even asked Coach Andy Reid, you know, what, what do you think about the game? You know, what, if it gets way ahead, do they, they kind of get out of it? He said, you watch what happens when this game gets into a third quarter, and they're close. Oh, yeah. He said, you're going to see some pretty good football now. Well, well except, except for the missed field goal, goal all day. Except for the missed field goal, they'd be with an eight right now. Falls are under pressure with a swing to Alexander. What a move! Sean Alexander somehow got away from Al Wilson, left him in his tracks. <laughs> here's, here's one of those deals where Al Wilson does not want to see it. There's a flag on this play, but Al Wilson, Sean Alexander, just step back. Al Wilson goes down. Here's a little flip to the outside. Sean Alexander sees Al Wilson. After the play, and then puts the move on him. Richard Seymour will be called for unsportsmanlike conduct after the play, and that's going to be an automatic first down for the NFC. Of course, I had a chance to talk, I had a chance during this week, which you do, to talk to the players, and Richard Seymour said the New England Patriots will be in a much better mindset to defend their title than they were after Super Bowl 36, which I'm sure is not a pleasant thing for anybody. set a new Pro Bowl record with his fourth touchdown pass, breaking the mark set by our own Joe Theismann and tied by Phil Sipp. That should be considered like a lateral. That, that shouldn't be considered a pass. <laughs> I put an asterisk by that one. That was a little flip. Hey, and he's got plenty of time left to look for another one, too. Please. Here's the Joe Theismann record breaker. A little flip. Another one, Sean Alexander had the great first quarter. Now it's come back and done very well here. And now they will go for two. Twelve out of twenty for Bulger. 152 yards. Four touchdowns. Beasley is the only setback. Bulger trying to find somebody and take him down. And Al Wilson wasn't going to let him go. <laughs> Al Wilson just, I mean, he came up the field and he said, I'm not going to take a fake. You're going down. The NFC closes the gap again. Stay tuned for Sports Center. Coming up next, John Anderson, Stuart Scott. The NFL's top plays of the playoffs are all accessed with Tom Brady at Pebble Beach and the Lakers with a magical finish all coming up when we're done here from Honolulu. And the NFC has really made a game of it. They were down by 25. Now they're one touchdown away from winning it. Tom Brady living life large. Isn't he, though? And, the and he deserves it, too. Derek Mason deep to receive the kick from the 10. Has a seam up the middle, now takes it to the outside. Knocked down by Brian Erlach. Ever since Mark Bolger has come in, he has just lit it up. Starts out with his first pass, gonna go to his teammate, Torrey Holt, little pump and go. And there it is, number one. Now, Keenan McCardell comes across underneath, gets himself another touchdown. Why not come back, step up? Where's Algie Crumper? This play was called by the fans. He fights his way into the end zone, and now the little shovel pass, the record-breaking touchdown catch by Sean Alexander. And whose record was that? Phil Sims. <laughs> <laughs> Breeze Combs hitting the backfield, dropped for a loss of about five. Corey Simon, let's go to Morton. Mark Bolger, Mark, you have broken the all-time Pro Bowl record. Touchdown passes for it. Joe Theismann and Phil Sims. Theismann said it should be an asterisk because of the shovel pass. Maybe. If I can get one more, then we'll, uh, we'll make it legitimate. <laughs> what about working with your, your, your teammate, Torrey Holt? You changed the terminology a little bit, I understand. It helps a lot. Uh, you know, everyone in this league runs pass routes different, and uh, we had a play called Colorado on. I switched it to a two-shake just because that's what we're familiar with and it worked. 
it, it, this offseason has been, even this week's been interesting because Kurt Warner's been in the news with the controversy. Do you, you feel like sometimes you're in the middle of something you never asked for? You know what? I, I think the lead here, that's great. You know what? I'm just here having a great time playing with all these guys. I'm four touch on passes. We just took the lead. There's plenty of time to worry about that stuff. All right, Mark. All right, guys. Dre Bly just went 31 yards for a touchdown with the interception, and do you believe it? Down by 25. No team in Pro Bowl history has ever been down by more than 12 and come back to win the ball game. Boy, does he jump this route to Derek Mason. And then what a terrific job. I mean, here's a guy, we talk about guys that play in places. Anquan Bolden in, Saint, in uh, Arizona. Not with a whole lot around him. Dre Bly up in Detroit. And Steve Mariucci, one of his guys, showing very well. And, of course, Peyton Manning says, I've seen this too often. Well, let me just tell you what. Your record sticks around for a while. You got one. Most attempts without an interception. Still here. As Peyton was on the verge of breaking was, that one. He was on the verge of breaking 27. He threw an interception. Thanks for not telling me. Dre Bly, who played in four years in St. Louis. First Lions corner since Lem Barney in 77, and they will go for two. Leading 46-45. Man, this could set us up for overtime. Yes, it could. Wow. <laughs> Bolger gives it to Amon Green. They got the two. can set a record for the longest Pro Bowl in the history of the world. I think we already have. Welcome back to ESPN, folks. <laughs> you thought this was going to be a blowout? We don't have them on ESPN. 48-45. Well, I tell you, when you get a team fired up, look at the way that offensive line. Remember, now, this is just man-on-man -man blocking. They do a tremendous job to open up that hole for Amon Green. We'll be back with more in the second half from Duke, <laughs> North Carolina. <laughs> Let's go to Mort. He has Dre Bly. That's right. Dre, uh, you jump in front of Derek Mason. You pick off Peyton Manning. Now you got the lead. Tell us about the play. It was a curl route. Just read Peyton. Read the receiver, read the route, and I was able to make a play. You guys have come from so far behind. What does it mean? It means a lot, man. They asked me when it was 38 to 13. What, uh, what did I think? I told them it was a long football game left ahead of us. And, you know, with, with the way we... You can put up points and all the playmakers you have. He's still right in it. There's still plenty of game for them because Peyton Manning gets the ball back. That's why I need to go get my help helmet and buckle up. <laughs> I, love, I love when we interview a guy right after he runs like 50 yards. Yep. Hey, yep. Absolutely. Well, now all of a sudden you've got guys on the NFC kickoff cover team getting ready to get out on the field and get going. This whole game has taken on an entirely different complexion now as we go through with four minutes and 50 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. A little bit of, even Michael Strahan's out there dancing. The NFC has scored five touchdowns in its last seven possessions. Mason driven back to the two. Taken down at the 23 yard line. The NFC players wired and fired up. Time. Was that a linebacker in there with that shirt on? That was, Le <laughs> uh, well, LeVar was in there whooping. A little bit of a different look for you. We've got a steady cam out there on the field, right? Right zoomed into the huddle. And now the AFC finds itself behind. <laughs> under pressure from Simon gets the consignment. I'll tell you what, you talk, you know you when you line up a guy and you're gonna take him out like on a block. Here's a guy, a defensive end, lines up a tight end, and he knows he's, he sees him dancing, he knows he's gonna take him out. He's gonna have the clear shot to do it, and Leonard Little <laughs> Gonzalez bounces right back up. 
Manning goes to the shotgun. Gonzalez couldn't hold it. Peterson in coverage. This game, is, and you all of a sudden, the defensive backs are a lot closer to the yes, wide receivers. Are. The defensive guys are breaking on the ball a little bit more. The it, line's rushing harder. You look at the defense line. It may be just one-on-one, -on -one, but I'll tell you right now, Jonathan Ogden has got his hands full out there with Kamir Biagamilla. Chris Jenkins. Corey Simon. Michael Strahan. Gray's having a good time. Nate Manning wants to go for it here on fourth down. You have three minutes and 50 seconds left. Great play. You, tell you, what, you look at that. Was it, I mean, that was outstanding coverage. Manning just threw this ball chest way downfield. But why? This game, remember, he just intercepted a pass, went for a touchdown. Ah, nobody's tired now. Not when you're ahead. Not at the end of the game. You just don't get tired. Well, he's taking a little while to get back to his position. And they will go for it on fourth and two. Tony Gonzalez. This one's tipped and intercepted. Corey Chavis. Inside the 20. 10. 5. Touchdown. No. No out of bounds at the two. Dexter Copley tipped it. And Corey Chavis in his first pro ball from the Minnesota Vikings. Gets the interception. He had eight during the regular season. Honored in the NFL. Almost the entire bench empties for the NFC. I mean, these guys are so juiced up. Dexter Coakley, number 52, goes right through his hands. Corey Chavis says, wait a second. There's a ball floating around out here. But did you see what Dexter Coakley did? He gets back up and he makes the block on Tom Nealon, the center. Nealon, the center. I mean, he tips the ball, then gets back up, then makes a block. And that was Willie Anderson from the Cincinnati Bengals that knocked Corey Chavis out of bounds. The AFC has committed six turnovers in this half, and it has been a remarkable comeback for the NFC All-Star. Unfortunately, we've seen that look on Peyton's face uh, before, a little frustration. Alexander, the running back behind Beasley, they place it just inside the two. Play action pass. No, I think Sean's going to get it. Peyton got the touchdown. This is amazing. The PAT will give us 100 points in the Pro Bowl. The other record was 82. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That just puts it in perspective. Eight, 18 more points, and the AFC still has three minutes and 32 seconds. 50, basically 55 to 45. If he makes the extra point. Well, he missed the field goal. Wow. There's some college basketball games you don't get this many points. <laughs> Wilkins for the point after. Well, I'll tell you what. The people want to see a football game. They got it. They got it. If you like offense, this is your game. And consecutive interceptions for Peyton Manning, who had had a brilliant start to this game. Just let me ask you a question, Joe. When, 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 when you look at, here's Peyton Manning. Uh, and there goes in, plays one series, plays one play. Throws a touchdown. And Peyton Manning comes in. He plays, Joe. Now he doesn't play for, what, almost a half of a ball game or in, in equivalent time. Now he comes back in. How, 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 how do you get yourself back into the rhythm of a game? I don't think it's so warm here. I don't think you ever really get out of it. And the one thing about Peyton Manning, you saw those statistics. The NFC with six takeaways, the AFC with one. You never really get out of it, Paul. And especially with Peyton Manning because this is his offense. The only problem is, is Tony Gonzalez doesn't know it quite as well as he does. And, and you know, you got Chad Johnson and Derek Mason. They're all new to what Peyton is familiar with. Since the middle of the third quarter, the NFC has outscored the AFC 42 to 7. Look at the NFC guys dancing. They're having a good time. 
<coughs> Even T.O. Boy, it's amazing how things change from one side to the other. You could just see the NFC guy saying, I brought my mother-in-law, my two cousins, my wife, my three kids. Yeah, 30000 $35,000 is just about covered. We're down how much? We need this one run back for a touchdown. Absolutely. Mason, three yards. There's never been a kickoff return for a touchdown. It's not going to be here as Corey Chavis makes the tackle. Hey. Wednesday night at 9 on ESPN, you'll see Yao Ming, Stevie Francis, and the Houston Rockets against Shaquille O'Neal and the Lakers in a key Western Conference matchup. The game also available on ESPN HD. It's NBA Wednesday on ESPN. Michael, you were talking about how many points the NFC scored uh, up against the AFC. Wilkins missed a field goal. It, it was basically a chip shot. That's that's even, even, yeah, it's been another three. So Manning needs two scores. He has certainly done this before. Oh, he yeah. this one to 29. He got 28 in four minutes, and he only needs 10 in three, so it's That's conceivable. Right. The problem is that these guys, as you said before many times, they don't know the offense that he's calling. Here comes Baja Villamilla again. He was held by the pace match that time on the way in. Clock just continues to run. I just love the passion that these pro bowlers play with. And he throws this incomplete. Mason in between two defenders. The ball was behind him. That stops the clock at the 237 mark. 100 points. All right, be honest. When it was 38 to 13, any chance the NFC was going to come back? Sure. Absolutely. No question. Wait, 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 wait. I, said, I said be honest. We you talked about lying that. Dogs. <laughs> we talked about that, didn't we, Paul? Yeah. We that, that. Right. It's funny you mentioned it now because we were just thinking back and we're down by that many points. Well, now the way's on the way to the NFC. Peyton under pressure, throws sideline to Chad Johnson. He makes the catch to 49. I like I like the way Chad Johnson just catches the football run. I, he just really is special. Well, you, you, every single one of these guys, which you had a chance to see the practice of, the wide receivers, they catch the ball with their hands, and and they they really not being insane. They really make it look easy. Right? They it is, right. it, 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 it's just their hands are so soft, they just catch everything. And their their breakout years. Chad Johnson had one this year. Corey Holt had one this year. Manning is time to Mason, and Mason will get out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Six catches for Derek Mason. You just mentioned Chad Johnson. He's gained 133 yards receiving today. And the clock stops at the 221. Well, I, I've written down seven different MVPs and crossed them out. <laughs> well, sooner or later, we have to do something. Oh, I've got to go with Bolton. Four touchdown passes and a Pro Bowl record. You know, I, and I, I'm, I'm thinking it's Champ Bailey. I mean, the plays that he has made. Not really. a bad choice. Manny takes the draw. Peyton Manny to Jackson. Stays on his feet. Goes out of bounds at the 11. What did I tell you about it making it look easy? I tell you. They just show you I know so much. Watch their their hands are they so do, soft. And you talk about the total concentration on the ball. This is, you know, here comes Banning. Throw this thing out here to Chad Johnson. Watch this. Watch him catch the ball. Watch how easy this is. In his hands, looks upfield. I mean, that's easy. And he victimized Champ on that one. Corey Chavis, Chavis shoves him out of bounds. Corey Chavis does a good job of heading towards the sideline. Boy, Bajabiamilla has just been a handful 
for everybody. Well, he got here yesterday. He should have been asleep hours ago. <laughs> well, it's right. Brad. It's Brad Hopkins is not. It, I mean, he just can't stay with him. Brad Hopkins is number 72, and he gets a jump to the outside. Now, what, watch this. Here comes some speed. He's got him by the face mask, which should have been called. And he breaks through that, and he's back in Peyton Manning's face. That's the second time Brad has grabbed that face mask and just tried to drag him down. He grabs it, notice him going by him. So that's what not practicing all week with these days. Richard Kim on the draw. Kerlacher makes the tackle. Well, KGB is also in on the tackle. Two-minute warning comes at 1.59. Back to Honolulu in a moment. John Anderson and Stuart Scott standing by for Sports Center. They'll have the top plays of the playoffs in the NFL. Our all-access look at Tom Brady while he plays at Pebble Beach and a Lakers magical finish. All on Sports Center when we're done here. And who knows? We might be a while. It's only 55-45, and the AFC is driving. Touchdown makes it a three-point game. And then an onside kick, and I will guarantee you there will be 20 guys out there who have never been on an onside kick. Well, no, I, I, I would think the, the receiving team, a lot of those guys play that because of the Maybe a team. couple. But it's the kicking guy. And he's trying to make that a possibility. Looks one way, throws the other. Touchdown! What a catch by Hines Ward. Well, it, you know what? I've been telling everybody about and looking at the guys with hands. Here's a guy with a set, set probably the, the best hands in football. Heinz Ward, if watch him snatch this ball out of the air. Watch his hands, folks. Bang. That's it. He's already got control. Boy, Peyton just rockets this one. How many times have we seen Marvin Harrison in a very similar situation make that kind of a catch? Man, oh man, oh man. 52. <laughs> Vander Jet with the point after. Uh, this is only the third time in NFL history we've had more than 100 points scored in a game. The other two were regular season games. We're going for 200. <laughs> Come on, boys. 55 to 52. <laughs> that was the eighth career touchdown pass for Peyton Manning. That is a record in the Pro Bowl. Boy, he's going to put that record, like, so far out there. As many as he's going to get to. I can see the guys at the AFC in the huddle saying, okay, this is called an onside kick. Is that what this is called? Leroy, Leroy Glover's going, it wasn't supposed to be quite like this. We're not supposed to be out here up and down the field. They started when the sun came up, and now they're going to quit playing until the sun goes down. <laughs> That's right. That uh, eighth touchdown pass, by the way, broke uh, Richie Gannon's record of seven. And that is our choice for the MVP, well, Mark just, Bulger. Let me just throw another line. little added deal at you. They both still have three timeouts remaining. Hello? <laughs> the old record for either team to score points was 51. The AFC has broken that record. They're behind. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. And it's so dark up here in the booth now, we can't see anything. It is. I mean, the sun's gone down. Now, do they have? They don't have to go onside. They can kick it off and use their timeout. Oh, they got their timeout. Right? Yeah, they just use their timeout. He got that right, big boy. But the NFC is not taking any chances. They're going to put everybody except one player ten yards away from the ball. And Lavernius Coles, or excuse me, Jerry Azuma, is the only deep man. And you got Troy Vincent, uh, Keenan McCardell, and Fred Beasley right in the middle. And I'll tell you what else you have. You have both kickers are out on the field for the AFC. So both Vanderjack and Hendrick. Well, they worked on a lot of this stuff where they, they just popped that ball. They actually and did. It's, it's Hendrick that does it. They worked on onside kicks uh, during practice. Here we go. Try to pop it straight up in the air. Fair catch made and caught, and then a flag for interfering with the fair catch. What a smart move by Alex Bannister. That's why he's a special teams guy. 
knew exactly what to do. Fair catch it. They they aren't supposed to hit you. <laughs> Notice I said supposed you know, to. Uh, this, look at his heads up play. Bannister, look at And that's a clear signal for a fair catch. And Willie, Willie McGinnis decides he's going to drill him anyway. Yeah, why not? Let's take a shot. Well, he says, I'm not necessarily on this team, and this ought to prove that I never want to be. <laughs> Now, the officials talking it over. They're having a good time, too. Scoreboard operators, the tiest, uh, most tired guy in the entire building. Him and your tongue. He's out of numbers, <laughs> man. I mean, all the work that you did for the pregame. I hadn't planned on speaking this long. <laughs> oh. All right, it's pretty simple. Tory Holt helping out a little bit. Steve McNair took his pads off about four hours ago. <laughs> he threw the touchdown pass to Chad Johnson. The onside kick was kicked up in the air. The receiver made a fair catch signal. It is fair catch interference with a member of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty automatic first down. Oh, that's... See, now, the way this is kicked, it is not kicked into the ground. Right. I think that may have been part of the discussion. Right. If, if the ball was kicked into the ground and bounced up, the fair catch signal would be null and void. Besides that, it wouldn't be illegal. That's right. It, it wouldn't happen. It would have been over with. There's the fair catch, and here comes Willie McGinnis. Now, he doesn't know that he's just trying to get around Keith Brooking. Oh. Well. Well, there are going to be some timeouts here. I think he goes for number five. The AFC has its full complement. And now you've got a Green Bay Packers center, a Green Bay Packer guard, a Green Bay Packer tight end. Bulger fumbles the snap from center and got it back. And a St. Louis quarterback who fumbled the ball. Yeah, a St. Louis quarterback, you're right. Mark Bulger is the player of the game, a Pro Bowl record, four touchdown passes, 12 out of 20, 152 yards, came in to play the last third of the game, and the guy who is 18 and 18 18-4 as a starter for the St. Louis Rams adds this to his resume in his first Pro Bowl. It's you not think, going to be his last either. You think there's going to be a controversy there? Well, I don't think there's a controversy. I think Mark Bolger is going to be the quarterback of the St. Louis Rams. I think the question remains is where will Kurt Warner wind up going and playing quarterback? Right. And will he have to compete? Will he go in and have a job? I mean, I think the questions really revolve around Kurt Warner more than they do whether or not Mark Bolger will be the quarterback of the Rams. And there is a question of whether it would be cheaper for the Rams to keep him rather than trade him or cut him. I just think it would be a deterrent personally for him to stay there. It wouldn't benefit him at all. Sean Alexander. He never had a chance. Dwight Freeney was waiting for him. Excuse me. And Mark Bolger was one other guy that beat Joe at golf the other day, too. <laughs> no, he didn't. He, he made it. No, I, think he's, I think he's the only one. No, he's on the other team. Oh, that's hey, true. That's remember? right. That's right. Yeah. You know, there was a funny story about Freeney who just made that last tackle in high school. He played soccer, and he was a goalie. And normally, a soccer goalie in high school has to face 14 or 15 shots. He was on a terrible team, and he had to face 50 shots a game. He said, to heck with this. I'm going to go out for football. I don't know if anybody has a quicker first step coming off the ball. I mean, to watch him play through the course of this year, to see him come off the ball. He's only 6'1". He's not a, a tall guy, and, and he uses it to his advantage. Says he has a very low center of gravity, which allows him to make the turn quick around the corner. And right now, if they wanted to try a field goal from here, it would be 50 yards. Bulger back to throw Alexander on the draw. Lost his foot. Gets down to the 29. He would have had a first down if he had, had not fallen. Now it would be a 47-yard try if they want to go for the field goal. You know, where they can run a fourth down play. I think you you, you run a play. I think you go for the field goal. I, or they can punt. I the think about a field goal, though. Sorry, so we'll clarify it again. They, they can't rush him. They, they just kick it. Yeah. But 
what what you do is you force the AFC to score a touchdown if you make it. Exactly. If you if you with no timeouts I mean, remaining, but they've got an awful lot of time on that board. Well, you you know you're going to have Peyton Manning with a minute, and 20 seconds to go. I mean, not if you run a play. You're looking at fourth and 10 here. And a minute 20 for Peyton Manning is a lifetime. That's proven that time and time again. Throw it in the end zone. Go for it all, Paul. Don't you agree? No. Got Torrey Holt and Keenan McCardell as wide receivers. Fourth down. Holt into the pocket. Holt. Intercepted Brock Murray. Murray back to the 22. He cost these guys about eight or nine seconds by bringing that ball out. Yeah, wasn't the yardage, it was the time. You're yeah. right. If he, if he's right back where he would, if they get the ball at the 20. Again, you see Mark Bolger trying to go to Torrey Holt because of the familiarity. Little pump fake, throw it up in the air. And Brock Marion just watching all the way. Torrey's going backwards, Brock goes up, takes it at the highest point and figures, what the heck, maybe I can go 105 yards. Why not? Yeah, okay. They start from the 22 with a minute 15 seconds to go in the ball game. They do not have any timeouts. Peyton Manning throws sideline. Harrison on the comeback. By the way, they throw a flag here, and it's going to be offensive pass interference against Marvin Harrison. He pushed off. And they, they called it on him. Number 88 went out of bounds, oh. came back, and he legally touched the ball. Five yeah. yard penalty. Let me go. Yeah, first down. I was, I was saying he pushed up, but he went out of bounds and then came back in. Let me make a point about the AFC if they do get the chance. And here's I'm Marvin trying, coming I'm down. To do, I'm trying to do a replay here. <laughs> so he goes out of bounds and he comes back in. Illegal touching. <laughs> right? Illegal touching. And there's a penalty. Okay, go. Okay. Kevin Mawai, who's the center for the AFC, can snap on field goals and extra points, so it shouldn't be a problem if the AFC gets in position to have an opportunity to kick. Harrison in between Bailey and Peterson. You get the idea, you got to put about five guys on Marvin Harrison right now. Yeah, unfortunately, your rules don't let you. This is all Champ Bailey on Marvin Harrison. No timeouts. Manny trying to get the field goal. Hines Ward makes the catch at the 43. A gain of 19. This is exciting. It is. This is great. What well, great drama. Because I'm not going home for 10 more days. I'm going to Maui. So they, make it they play all night, they want. That's one of the pass routes they're running. Maui, Paul. That Maui corner. Look at this. Look at that smoke. Look at, again, I'm not belaboring the point about the hands, but look at how easy that is, Mike. They, they just... But you watch these guys in practice. Most of these guys will go down, Joe, and try to catch with one hand. They do a lot of one-handed catching just to get eye contact. They've gained 40 yards in the last 15 seconds. And another deep out. Catch made by Harrison, close to another first down. He got, he got the best kicker in all of football. Only one he's missed was a 50-yarder. Yeah. That was it. And that one doesn't it. count on the record. No, because he hadn't, he hadn't missed all year long. Well, he'll pick it up starting at 41 next year. That's right. Trying to improve his own NFL record. Because Peyton would be satisfied with one for one here. 34 seconds left. Man, throws the out. Gonzalez one up. That stops it with 29 seconds. From here, it would be a 51-yard field goal drive. This is an easy, you can throw the ball in the middle of the field here, run up, spike it, lots of things you can do. Got about four, three or four, at least, at least three or four plays left. Now, if you're a player for the AFC right now, do you want to try for overtime, or do you want to go for the end zone and win it? I think with 29 seconds go, you have to just try and get completions, and if the guy can break it running the end zone, fine. If not, I think you settle for the field goal defense. Dre Bly was all over Harris. Oh, he 
grabs him and spun him around. And, and you know, let me tell you, if he doesn't yeah, it's a touchdown. Yeah, if he doesn't <laughs> it's, grab him, it's, it's, there's no question it's a touchdown. Marvin Harrison has a touchdown. Bly saves it right here because he's already got him beat. He's, and that ball was there. See, now remember, these guys cannot come up and press them. To be honest with you, we talk about the difference for the wide receivers with quarterbacks and center exchanges. For these quarterbacks, they're so physical. They play a lot of press coverage. Now, all of a sudden, they have to play off all the time. Now you've got three shots at the end zone before you kick the field goal. They Chris Jenkins got the sack. They got to wait. All these guys get back and lined up. And Manning kills the clock with four seconds left. Huge play by Chris Jenkins. And without a timeout, Paul, you're absolutely right. These guys had to come on a dead sprint to get back. Well, here's, you know, this is the one thing you just can't let happen. And look at Jenkins. I mean, he takes Dalen all the way back. And that's the center. One-on-one -on -one coverage, one-on-one -on -one blocking. And takes... Takes him all the way back. Man, I'll tell you what. Great that's play by Chris Jenkins. That's and now, something you just don't want ever to happen at that point. Not to go for the tie. Not in that position. Not when you're that close. Vanderjet will try from 51 to tie it at 55. And it does not look like there's much of a breeze down on the floor. guy I mean he has he missed two long with 52 51 and he's not used to missing any of them the final score the NFC 55 the AFC 52 for Joe Theismann Paul McGuire Susie Colbert Chris Mortensen and our entire ESPN crew this is Mike Patrick say good night from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu Hawaii this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night, everybody. ESPN, thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League.